Hey, everybody, welcome. Welcome back. For those of you who were with us just two hours ago, this is your host, Jim Masters, and this is the Jim Masters Show Live, our entertainment lifestyle talk show series that we started way back in the spring. I think it's like 230 episodes ago, and this is our second show of the day. A lot of you I know were with us earlier when we had uh, internationally acclaimed and renowned dear friend as well to Greek tenor Mario Frangoulis on for an epic conversation, music, levity, and uh, lots of memories going down memory lane with his incredible career and some really deep, inspiring conversation. If you didn't get a chance to see that episode because it was on at an earlier time to accommodate the fact that he's in Athens, Greece, Athens, Greece. we did the show actually at one o'clock Eastern and uh, 10 a.m. Pacific 8 p.m. Eastern European time, which of course is in Greece. So if you missed that episode, you were out and about, you can see the entire episode in the archives on our YouTube channel at Gym Masters TV. Matter of fact, all 230 plus episodes of our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series are there for the taking and the enjoyment and the binge watching right there on our YouTube channel. So check that channel out. All kinds of great guests from uh, television and music, film, Broadway, Hollywood, science, health, wellness, culinary arts, sports, comedy, uh, inspiration, uh, you name it. This is uh, like a traditional entertainment lifestyle talk show series that you may remember from the past, like think of uh, Dick Cavett and uh, David Susskind, maybe Steve Allen, Carson, uh, Merv Griffin, Mike Douglas, sprinkled in with the modern vibe and sensibility of today. We're conversational. Uh, we have a certain structure and format, but we don't script or teleprompt anything. It's free flowing and uh, it goes in a myriad of directions that sometimes even amazes me, your host. Thanks to everybody for tuning in. Uh, I see lots of comments coming in already. And uh, we do have an international audience. Our viewers call themselves the Lovities. And there's a reason why I mentioned it uh, during the beginning of the show, in case you didn't know. I say the show is always inspirational and it's about light, love, and levity, right? Well, back in the summertime, I said it a little too fast and I said, levity. And from day forward, <laughs> that day forward, you know what happened? Everybody said they love that word. So the viewers are the levities. They call me Mr. Levity. They call this, which is our home studio, <laughs> Levity Hall, and the rest is history. So you're going to have a good time tonight because we have a music legend, Billboard charting jazz and pop composer, musician, guitarist, and all-around great guy, Terry Wolman is here. He's worked with some of the best in the business, including somebody who you saw uh, maybe about a month ago when we had an epic conversation with her, another music legend, Melissa Manchester. He's worked with her. He's worked with some of the greats in the industry, and he's a prolific composer and arranger. He's also uh, been responsible for music you've heard on network television and documentaries and commercials as much as uh, on radio. And uh, we're so excited to have him here. And we're going to welcome him in just a second. First, as you know, we always like to greet our lovely viewers who watch from all around the world. It's amazing. Uh, we've been hearing from Portugal and Japan, Australia, Greece, Italy, France, Ireland, England, Switzerland, Sweden, Holland, uh, United States, Canada, of course, Mexico, Brazil, uh, South Africa, you name it. And you know what? As always on the Gym Master Show Live, we always toast you and you and you and you and you, and we welcome all of you on a Saturday night to our show, or maybe it's uh, already Sunday morning, perhaps wherever you are, or maybe it's the afternoon, but wherever you are watching, thanks for joining us. Let's welcome some of our lovely viewers here on the show. It's always great to have you guys here. And again, there is our special guest. You can see the uh, announcement right there. And we're so excited to have him here, live and direct from beautiful Long Beach, California. Hi, Jim and Lovities. I wish you a nice evening. Thank you. Willie is watching in the Netherlands. Good evening, Willie. Good to have you with us. I know it's late in the hour, like 1 a.m. where you are, right, my friend? Mary Bishop in Pine Island, Florida is watching. Hello, Jim and Lovity friends. Should be another great show with Terry. Welcome to the show, Terry. Absolutely. We appreciate him being here. And of course, I welcome all of you watching on our YouTube channel at Jim Masters TV and Facebook. Hello, Jim and Lovity. It's great to be back at Lovity Hall for the second time. 
That is Real Dedication. You were with us for our first show with Greek tenor Mario Frangoulis this afternoon, and now you're here for Terry Woolman on the show tonight. Thanks for that uh, double lovity, Sherry. Hi, Jim and Lovities. Good to have you here. Kathy Short in Cleveland, Ohio. Hello, Jim. Again, Jim and Lovities, I really enjoyed your afternoon chat. Thank you very much. I'm glad you enjoyed that show. Mario and I have known each other for years. Again, I interviewed him on public television and we just stayed connected. I love when we get a chance to do that with so many friends in these industries. Bernadette, Bernadette is back. Hello again, Jim and fellow Lovities. Good to see you, Bernadette. In Southern California, Anne is here. Hello from sunny California. Hope you're having a wonderful day. We sure are, Anne, and it's cool to have you with us as always. Now, in the other sunny place, St. Augustine, Florida, Linda O'Dell is here. Good evening, Mr. Lovety. Good evening, Loveties. Good to see you as well, Linda. Love that. Bernadette says, hello, Jim and fellow Loveties. Pamela Perkle is here. Hello, Jim and everyone. Loveties. Those who will be, I like that. Those who will become Loveties. I love that. Merlin is here for show number two. She was here earlier. Uh, Merlin, I don't know if you heard the question answered by Mario, but Mario did say he um, he did do some Shakespeare as well. I think that was a question you had from Mario in the earlier show. Hi, Jim and Lovity is from Merlin. She's in Ontario, Canada. Juanita is back for show number two uh, in our two double Lovity episodes here on the uh, broadcast today. She's in South Africa, of course. Hello, Jim and all the Loveties, lovely Loveties, double Lovety today with two shows. Now we take you to Nova Scotia and Karen Campbell Green. Hello out there in Lovety land. Good to see you as well. Karen, I hope you're doing well and it's nice to see you and welcome. Tina is here. Howdy, Jim and Lovety's family. Good to see you, Tina. Uh, from New York City, Kathleen Walker is here. Good to see you, Kathleen. Hope you're having a good day. And I love how all of you... Uh, <laughs> I love how all of you say hello to each other. Tulips coming from Holland from Willie. If you missed the earlier show, you can see it on YouTube. Everything is archived on YouTube. This show will be archived on YouTube as well. Mona is here. Mona, that package you sent from New Orleans is in the post office. And we're going to pick that up Monday. And I thank you for sending this surprise package my way. I can't believe it. That's very generous and kind of you, Mona. We'll uh, make mention of it on the Monday show after we open it. Thank you in, in advance. Hi again, everyone. And Wozniak is here. She was with us for the earlier show. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed the earlier show with Mario as well. There's going to be a lot of cool music, live music and, and recorded on this episode with uh, Terry. And uh, you're going to love him. He's just really a great guy. Good to see everybody here, and we welcome all of you to the show and all of your smiley faces. So let me tell you about my great guest, uh, Terry. Uh, if you are a lover of good music, then you you know who he is. <laughs> He's amazing. He's uh, a legend in the industry, and it's really an honor for him to be with us. And you know what? He uh, told me some beautiful things before he went live. He's a big fan of the show, and he loved the uh, episode we did with Melissa Manchester. And he sort of gets this lovely vibe, which I think is cool. Uh, that's amazing. I love the fact that he gets the vibe and the warmth that we do here on the show because it's that's what it's all about. He's an American composer. He's arranged and composed music for network television, feature films, documentaries, commercials from the syndicated TV show Scrubs to working alongside iconic film composer Bill Conti, from Melissa Manchester's 21st album, The Fellas, to the Emmy-nominated HBO film, If You're Not in the Obit, Eat Breakfast, <laughs> Carl Reiner, uh, featuring Tony Bennett, Dick Van Dyke, Alan Bergman, and Dave Grusin. Simply put, from solo instruments to rhythm section to orchestra, Terry Woolman, is the guy that delivers. He's just so amazing. Um, from again, producing the Emmy nominated Alan and Marilyn Bergman, Dave Grusin's song, Just Getting Started, to co producing albums from Melissa Manchester, working with Dionne Warwick, Al Road, Dave Koz, Joe Sample, uh, Stevie Wonder, producing music for film and television from Nickelodeon to Jazzer Size to the Emmy award-winning ABC documentary, Invisible Soldier. Terry has a real expertise and passion for all of his projects. He also owns Mango Eater Music Productions, which is a one-stop music production and music library company specializing in world-class music for recording, film, television, concerts, tours, 
and special events. Specializing in pop, jazz, R&B, rock, world genres, Terry's extensive background as producer, guitarist, music director, arranger, composer, and educator has equipped him with a highly diverse skill set of techniques and a uniquely creative approach for every musical project and artistic collaboration. That is just the short list, folks. He is absolutely amazing. Got a great smile, doesn't he? He loves what he does. Let's welcome him live and direct from Long Beach, California into Lovety Land on the Jim Master Show Live. Terry, welcome. Good to have you with us. Hi, Jim. Thanks for having me. And hello, everybody around the world. I'm really happy to, to see you. Oh, they are all here. And and wait, you're going to get a wave of Lovety coming in. They're all going to say, uh, you're now a Lovety. Merlin, here you go. Merlin, Ontario says, welcome, Terry, to Lovety Hall. You're Thank you, oh, Merlin. That took like six seconds. You're already a Lovety. So there's... I say this all the time, and you've probably heard me say it on the show. There are Oscars, there are Grammys, there's Tonys, there's Tellies, there's Emmys, there's Peabody's. But when you get a lovety on the Gym Masters show live, aren't your feet tingling right now? I kind of <laughs> am feeling all tingly. <laughs> That's what happens. That's what happens. Uh, Willie, who's here from the Netherlands, welcome, Terry, to the Gym Masters show. Hi, Willie. She they're all welcoming you here. Barry, thank you, Joanne. And Barry's watching. Hello from Ireland. Yes. Hi, Barry. Hi, and, Joanne. And Anne says you're not that far from where she is. You're in uh, Long Beach, and uh, she's right there in SoCal. Kathy in Cleveland says, welcome, Terry. Nice to have you in the land of Lovety. Tina says, yeah. yeah, she's in Cleveland. And welcome, Terry. Glad to see you from Tina, which is really, really cool. And... Uh, Linda says, cool background, Terry. How many instruments do you play? <laughs> well, all of these. Uh, <laughs> I, I play, uh, I'm primarily a guitarist. I play keyboards, uh, but also anything with strings, I I do my best to play. Banjo, cavaquinho, dobro, ukulele, uh, slide guitars, electric, acoustic, uh, even some bass, uh, guitaron. I love ethnic instruments. Uh, even things that you can blow into, you know, little, here's a little flute, you know, I just, anything that makes a sound, I'm game. That's perfect. See, yeah. there, here's your answer, Linda. You got it right on the spot, direct. <laughs> uh, Tina says, Poconos are in the hall. Poconos in Pennsylvania. Nice to see you there. And, uh, Thank you very much, Karen. Glad you like the shirt. I appreciate that. And uh, let's see. Oh, uh, howdy. Got some time to sit and watch. Waving at you from Vermont. Waving oh, back. Vermont. Waving. Vermont is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And Bernadette says, uh, we regulars are diehard Loverties, right, friends? We're also happy to welcome newcomers into our Loverty community. That's nice, Bernadette. We appreciate that. Linda in St. Augustine, Florida says, good evening, Terry. You are a lovety now. Thank you. In <laughs> St. Augustine, the oldest city in the United States. That's right. That's right. He's a history buff too, folks. Well, I'm a Floridian. <laughs> I'm born and raised in Miami. So. That's right. That's right. I, I used to go there when I was a kid, St. Augustine. So you're, so you're like me. You need the water. You need the coast. Yeah. Uh, I, I grew up uh, in the Northeast uh, in New York on Long Island. And then, of course, along the Southern New England coast. And to me, the ocean really speaks to me. It's my Zen place. It's my go-to place. And, um, you know, I don't know if I could, I mean, if I had to and they paid me enough, but still I would need an access to the water. Uh, there's something about the ocean, the rhythm, the tide, the, the expansiveness of it. I'm swimming it, surfing it, boogie boarding it, sailing it, whatever, uh, having grown up, you know, near the ocean. Um, I don't know if in the, maybe in the middle it might seem claustrophobic for me because I need that ocean, that water, that tide, that rhythm. I would imagine you too growing up in South Florida. It does the same for me. It's yeah. a water is a, just a big part of my life. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Even I did, I lived up North for a while. I went to school in Boston. For, so I, I spent three years there. I didn't see the water that much, but I, I, anytime I could, I went to the pier or to the beach and, would take a look. I was very busy practicing and studying. 
yeah. white there, but uh, but that was still a, a sea a sea town. So when you were in Boston, we were going we were going to Berkeley or Berkeley. what did you Berkeley? I Berkeley. Oh. I was there for three years, but I went straight through, uh, no breaks, and got a degree in arranging. Mm, fantastic, fantastic! It's a it's a phenomenal school, of course, and an yeah. ultimate ultimate school. Uh, Juanita, who's a regular lovely viewer in South Africa, Terry says, "Welcome to the show, Terry from South Thank Africa." You, Juanita. That's really nice. Yeah. Uh, Bernadette says, "Welcome, Terry, to Lovety Hall. Love your work." She's familiar with your work as well. Which, Bernadette, thank you so much. Yeah, really nice. And uh, Pamela Perkle oh, says, hey, "That never gets old." Thank you, yeah. thank you, Bernadette. I really appreciate that. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. And Pamela Perkle grew up in Lakeland, Florida. She misses it sometimes. Kansas City is great, though. She's in Kansas City. Yeah. Uh, and Linda adds to her comment by saying. I have to say, you have gorgeous hair. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Linda. It's this is my COVID haircut. It's I haven't Me cut too. it all year, and it's kind of fun. Me too. Yeah, I was I was usually uh, short it. like that guy. Yeah, short, shorter. But this it's, I have not had it cut since March. If I take this hat yeah. off and these headphones, which are compressing yeah. it, boom, boom. Yeah. But it's it's kind of cool. I'm actually enjoying it. Jim, you look great too. It's it's kind of fun, you know. It's, it? Yeah, but. Thanks, Linda. Yeah, it's just <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. That's what it is. Ah, oh, Kenny James is watching. Kenny, wow. Kenny. Hi, I love you, Kenny. Kenny is. If you don't know him, mm. uh, we've been friends forever. Uh, I'm going to out you, Kenny. He was a Star Search winner. Look it up. <laughs> yes. Back in the Grand Prize winner, but one of the the best singers I know, and one of the best people I know. Well, Kenny, we would love to have you on the Gym Master Show live. So connect with Terry and maybe we can have him come on as well. It'd be wonderful to hear his stories and so much more. The COVID main Juanita says. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> you both look great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Allison says, hi, both. Great show. Thanks for everything. My pleasure. My pleasure. And Linda says, you're both mighty handsome. Oh, that's very kind, Linda. <laughs> You've been nipping at that sherry again, uh, Linda? No. <laughs> Lighting. We'll take it. We'll take it. <laughs> it took him and me two hours to do our hair. <laughs> uh, and Jim is telling you the truth about his hair without the hat. Yes. So I take that off. And Joey Ann, uh, I like long hair on men. Yeah, that's very good to know. I appreciate that. Uh, good to see everybody and keep the comments coming. And uh, it's so great to have you with us. And while you've got that in your hand, let's do a toast. Let's do a nice yeah. toast. We like to toast our guests. Cheers, Slancha. Cheers. And all, all the rest. Good health. Hmm. So how has Terry Woolman been keeping busy and crafty and connected during the craziness of everything that we've been all dealing with collectively? Wow, uh, that's a great question to start off with. By the way, uh, besides thanking you, thank you for inviting me to your show. I've really been looking forward to it. Thank you. Uh, and also thanks for including the word pop and collaboration in my intro, because those are two words that, um, that are important to me. Uh, you know, I consider myself a pop musician with a jazz background, and I love the art of collaboration. It's just so important uh, on every level, including interviews like this, which, as you said, it's an interview, but it's also a conversation. Right, exactly. And we're collaborating uh, in that right now, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it's been an interesting year, <laughs> hasn't it? Uh, you know, I started off by, um, staying focused, you know, and, and staying committed to doing my best to, to be healthy, to continue uh, to exercise and eat healthy and doing all those things. Even when there was that moment towards the beginning in March where I thought, I'm not so sure if I should be at the gym. Mm -hmm. This doesn't really feel like a good idea. They were still open and I just went, yeah, I'm not going to do this. You know, it was yeah. before we were shut down. So, um, exercising at home, getting out and doing walks in by the beach or bike riding or stretch bands and weights at home and just doing my best, but, but not, not stopping on a health regime and, and continuing to redefine what that is and, and how to do that. And then the same with, with being focused in being creative. Um, one thing was my, 
uh, my podcast that I host, Making It with Terry Woman, that we'll talk about during the show, came to a screeching halt uh, because it was done through a studio and, oh, and yeah. collaborative. And, and then we figured out how I could self-produce. I have a studio and and so I and it was really important to me to continue that. So we figured that out. So I I continued producing episodes of my podcast, and they've been, as yours have been, fascinating conversations uh, because COVID and, and the global pandemic has been very much a part of every conversation. Right. Also, musically, it's been a really interesting time because I confess it's been really difficult at points to stay creative, uh, to stay motivated. It's exhausting. It's exhausting every day just figuring out how to pay rent and yeah. eat food yeah. in the fridge and, and not get sick. Mm. You know, we've had over 40 personal friends and family members who have caught mm. it and fortunately survived, but have been incredibly ill. Uh, and so, you know, that's been at the forefront of everything, just being in a survival mode and in a sort of a twilight zone, uh, you know, Groundhog Day. Like uh, being in limbo sort yeah, of. Yeah, episode yeah. every day. So trying to maneuver through that and figure that out. But but I'm, I'm a pretty disciplined person. I, I studied martial arts for over 20 years. And, and I think my martial arts practice has kind of helped come help focus me to continue to just force myself to practice and to write. We all deeply, deeply miss performing. Mm -hmm. You know, all of our tours stopped, all of our recording sessions have stopped. Uh, and it's, it's been depressing and devastating and, and, uh, and the, the great unknown has been overwhelming, but I also have the blessing and the capability, the the wherewithal of having a studio mm -hmm. and knowing how to self-record. I've been doing it for a long time. And so I've put myself to the task of continuing to write new music. And during this time, I somehow have managed to shake the, the, the tree and have gotten creative again and through it. And that's why I love that you said collaboration because collaboration collaborations have been a key part of what I've been doing through the pandemic. Uh, you know, I was, had just started recording a new solo album at the beginning of the year and I was two songs in and then we had to stop. Mm. I thought, well, what do I do? And I thought, well, let me see if I can continue this remotely because a lot of pro musicians around the country and around the world that I work with, have home studios too. You know, it's part of the skill set, as is yours, um, that we've learned to self record. And so I've started to do some remote recording with other artists around the world. And it's been pretty remarkable the access to some of the artists that I typically wouldn't be able to collaborate with because they wouldn't be home. Right. It wouldn't be available. And now they're just sitting around, stuck at home doing their best to stay motivated and inspired and they're practicing and they're, they're using the time to reflect and stay healthy and, and all of those things, but they really want to play. Mm -hmm. you know, our musicians need to play, you know, and, and you can practice all day long, but it's not the same as recording or interacting or performing. And so, so I've been reaching out to people and I've been, I figured out that I could continue to make this record remotely. And I've set the intention of finishing this album during the pandemic. It's taking longer. Mm. It's twice as much work for uh, maybe perhaps half the result, but ultimately the result is going to be tenfold because there's, there's a, another level of passion and intensity and intention that we're all bringing to this and love and support that uh, it's pretty moving to me emotionally yeah. it's it's powerful so i'm 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 sort of putting that together as a producer i'm i'm doing it and it's like piecework you know it's one song at a time and as i'm moving one song forward i'm starting the next and putting those pieces of the puzzle together so i'm actually doing a virtual 
horn section right now to finish the song. Yeah, and it's not really safe to all get in a room. So I just recorded the trumpets this past couple of days with Wayne Bergeron, who's one of the top trumpet players in the world who works with Jerry Hay and you know the and another one of my trumpet heroes and arranger heroes and and we're we're stacking everything remotely you know really? Wayne said yeah we can do this we've all worked together we everybody knows what they're doing and so it takes extra thought and extra communication uh but we're doing that and I just got the tracks back last night and I was so excited that at 11 o'clock at night when I saw the email and so going to bed, I downloaded it and started listening. And it's, it's <laughs> it sounds great. So I've been doing that. But I know you asked me a short question, but I, I got sidetracked twice with two other projects. One is I was encouraged to record an acoustic album, to switch directions, because I have this studio. Um, one of the levities was asking about the instruments on the wall behind mm. me. Yeah. And it was pointed out to me that since I have the capacity, this was sort of at the beginning of the pandemic where I wasn't really quite back in gear yet. And it was suggested that I I record and produce an acoustic album here in my studio and release it. And something that might be a little bit different stylistically, a little bit more healing, a little bit more introspective, perhaps. Um, something that I like to think that all of the music that I do, even with other artists that I do, it's all music is healing, you know, in so in in all forms. But but this was going to be instrumental music, and and I thought about it, and I thought that's a really good idea. And, and I thought I have some things that I've recorded that I've never released before. There's some things that I could dust off. There's some things I could finish, and I could record some new songs. So I put an album together. And it's this, it's Cassini's Last Dance, which you've got some artwork, we can show it later. But I decided to uh, release a digital album. And, and once I started, I wasn't even sure how to do it or what it was gonna sound like, but I started going through my vaults of music that I had not completed or, you know, that again, I hadn't released perhaps. and. And I put this album together and it started to reveal itself to me. And it was a really wonderful project. And then I was um, told that I was gonna be doing a video <laughs> for it. And it's like, how are we gonna do that? It's like with my iPhone and one person filming me, you know, socially distanced. And, you know, and we went and did that. You know, my graphic designer, uh, Leanna Ringstad, who lives in Sweden half the year, she said that she had this idea. And she said, just go do this footage, go walk out by the water with your guitar and play along to the music and do it at sunrise and do it at sunset and I'll put it together. And I just trusted the idea. I didn't even know what it was gonna be or what it would look like. And I got up with one of my neighbors uh, and Dave Huff, and cause I knew I, I was wise enough to not ask my wife Melanie to get up at five in the morning. <laughs> To do that with me. And so so Dave got up and met me at the beach in the morning and we filmed at sunrise. And then um, Melanie later that day, we filmed at sunset. And mm. we have these last dance video for the mm. single that was released. Uh, we put the album out digitally, it's out. It ended up on the Grammy ballot, which I was incredibly proud of. Mm. It's an album that, um, it's out there, it's streaming and it's available for everybody. And it's a really beautiful album. There's, there, there are strings and pianos. There's, there's th some things that I had recorded previously with musicians when we could be in a room together. And there's things that I recorded here in this room. And it's a really beautiful collection, something I would not have done had, had it not been for COVID. It was a complete right direction because my the music i usually do with my albums they're like they're up tempo they're feel good they get you to move in and everything and this is this is really you know light a candle and and drink an adult beverage or not and, mm -hmm. and it's feel better because we all need to feel better right now so i did that and it made me feel better and it, well, go ahead 
You know, I was going to say uh, that's a perfect segue to what Karen just said. Music has gotten her through losses in her life, hard times, difficulties with family members, a teenage daughter, a difficult day. Music has always helped me get through all of these things. Karen, as it does for me, mm. it does for me as well. And, you know, when, when one of the biggest gifts of being a musician is when, when we find out that we've touched people's lives. You know, when people write to us or tell us after a show, yeah. um, thank you, Juanita. Yeah, it's, we all need to remain positive to the best of our ability yeah. right now. And, you know, so when I know that something that I've written or arranged or produced or been a, a part of in some way um, touches somebody and it, and it helps them through a trying time or, or it, it's part of their experience during a joyful time. Um, it makes me feel good too. Yeah. You know, it's an, it's, it's a love exchange. It's an energetic exchange just as yeah. performing is as well. Right. Right. Lovity. <laughs> it's a lovity exchange. It's a lovity and, experience. You know, and there's something really interesting about recording music because recording music as, as opposed to performing music at, at a venue, a live venue, which at some point we will get back to, we'll figure out how to do that safely again. But recording music you do in, to various degrees in isolation, either by yourself or isolated with a few musicians. But there's still an energetic exchange with the listener. Mm -hmm. To me, the experience of making a record is not complete until it's heard. Right. When right. you listen to it, when you hear it, and you respond to it, there's there's a complete part of the process, you know, and, and as a producer and as an arranger, I leave space for you to insert yourself into the, the equation. You know, I don't play it a thousand notes. You know, I, I leave some room. That's beautiful. What you just said, that's an interesting way to do that. You, you leave room for them to, to envelop themselves with it and take whatever nuances from it that sort of are relatable to them and they apply to their own life and experience and, and what's going on. And because everybody can hear music, a sound, taste food, whatever it is, and right. get some, see a painting on the wall, go to a movie and everybody can get something completely different or sort of similar, but not exact to it. So the fact that you leave that space for people, it isn't just, this is it, this is what you're getting and yeah. like it or lump it. You you open it up for a full experience, which I think is quite amazing. It's it's part of the the magic of That's music. Right. And that goes for, for lyric vocal tunes as well, right. because I write both. I write instrumental music, I, I write vocal music and pop yeah. tunes. And, but it's still, you know, the interpretation you know, it's kind of where the, that's where the Scooby snacks are. That's where the magic is. Exactly. Speaking of the magic, we do have Cassini's last dance here. Should we share it? Yeah, let's share that. Absolutely. After that fabulous buildup. <laughs> this is me saying yes to an idea and I had no idea what it was going to look like. Mm -hmm. All right, folks, here it is. Enjoy. We're with the one and only Terry Woolman, Cassini's last dance. Is very proud of this, and it's our pleasure to share it with you and enjoy.
Really nice. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Ah, there's just a certain sound that just it puts you, it lowers your blood pressure and it sort of centers you and balances you. And uh, it, it was so perfect that you did it at the ocean too, because I, I saw the ocean in that. Um, so if I didn't see you do the video where you're at the ocean, I would have Imagine the ocean and yeah. birds sort of flying over and the, the soft tide coming in, some of those visuals. Um, mm, that's really nice. <laughs> Can I share that? Thank you. Can I share the, the backstory on this song? Oh, please do. Yeah. Uh, it's which is the title track of the album. Um, there's two things. One thing about the recording of the song that's really interesting. I only recorded it, I wrote it and recorded it one time. I had this idea for the song and I'll tell you in a moment where the idea came from. But I had this idea, I went to my studio, I hit record and played it. That's what you just heard. Mm. There was no editing, there was no rethinking, there was no in my head, it was just in my heart. It was just, and it's a very repetitive, obviously. It's kind of like a, Which is nice. a meditation. It's a mantra. It's not a typical, oh, I need to write a bridge or like, again, when I heard it later, I thought I should probably write another B section or a chorus. And then I went, no, it's kind of, it's perfect for what it is. And so I left it that way. And that what you heard is the one and only recording of it. You know, it was the first time and the last time that I I recorded it, which is kind of cool. So there's a there's a specialness of the moment that I played it, it because I just had the idea. Where the song came from was, <clears throat> I believe it was three years ago, my wife and I went with two other friends to JPL Engineering, Jet Propulsion Laboratory, um, which is part of NASA. And we happened to be there the final week of the Cassini project. The Cassini project was a, a mission that was a 20 year long mission where they were tracking images of Saturn. Mm, and, right. and literally there were people whose entire career scientist was based on this one mission. That's all they ever did. Uh, and it, they developed the technology for this. I mean, they built, they, it, the, the idea existed before the technology did. And it took, I believe it took five years for Cassini to even get to Saturn. And, and I found out that during those five years, they were inventing the technology on how to get the images back to earth. Mm. So they, sh they shot, they shot the, the satellite off into space on faith, you know, on intellect, but also on faith. Uh, there was a team of over 150 international scientists. We, so this was this last week, the final week of the mission. The way the mission ended, because the satellite went, it it basically lived, existed longer than they thought it would. Right. But it was falling apart. It was getting ready to die. They decided that they were going to, to basically send its trajectory into the planet's atmosphere and essentially let it disintegrate into, in, into the planet. It wasn't going to hit the planet, but it would become one with the planet that it had been observing and, and, you know, basically cohabitating with for all these years. And, you know, in a sense had this relationship with, I mean, we're kind of infantilizing, you know, this, you know, this piece of machinery, but I'm doing so because we were around the scientist in the final week of the life of this mission and they had dedicated their lives to it. And it was very emotional. Mm. around them and we got to actually sit in mission control like above them and 
there's no, there was no plexiglass or glass or anything. You could hear them. Like we weren't allowed to talk because it looked like any movie set, mm. like, you know, where you're seeing like a space launch, because this is where they, this is where they, how they model, you know, all the movies from. So the thing is, we were, we were privy to like this emotional moment of watching them, you know, doing basically getting ready to do an assisted suicide, you know, mm-hmm. with their, mm-hmm. with their, their satellite. The thing was, and, and by the, t- by the time we left this, this tour, which was incredible, and it was a guided tour and, and we got to speak to a couple of the scientists. By the time we walked to the car after this incredible experience, I had already like come up with this title, Cassini's Last Dance, and knew I needed to write a song, this song. So, but the amazing thing was after I wrote the song, and then three years later decided to was prompted and guided and encouraged to make this record and got my podcast back on the air again after being down for a month or so. I actually reached out to NASA and contacted, was put in touch with Dr. Linda Spilker, the head of the Cassini Project, who agreed to be a guest on my podcast. And I interviewed her. I sent her, I wanted to share the video Mm -hmm. with her and their team. She got permission from NASA to to share it with the, the entire international Cassini team. Wow. And and then she agreed to be a guest on my show and we talked about we talked about to my great surprise her perspective how art and science are one and the same. Mm. And it it was really incredible. Really I was say, how does that make you feel? That that's, that's sort of literally like a full circle situation there. It was amazing. Because we were both absolutely geeking out on each other. Yeah. You know, like I, I was amazed and she was amazed. She, you know, she, and they were amazed that an artist would be moved, so moved by their work that they would write something beautiful Mm. and care enough to record it, you know, and, and make a video and and all that. Well, I want to show you some of the uh, incredible comments that came in just in hearing that piece there. And there's, there's, a lot. <laughs> really, really nice. Uh, I have watched this and adored it. There's just something about an acoustic guitar that is so, that is soothing. I agree. Yeah. That's from Tina, Karen in Nova Scotia. Terry, this piece is so incredibly relaxing, makes me feel such peace and tranquility. Love the beach scene, Bernadette. Uh, so soothing and lovely. And that's perfect. That's a perfect location for the song. I agree. Rini Katz, who's a wonderful uh, cabaret star in New York and a dear friend, beautiful, feel the whole experience and my own space. You do feel right. Thanks you don't, me. yeah, you don't feel forced in this. You just feel like the song is there and it, it envelops you, right. but it doesn't tighten the lock. If that makes any sense, it, uh, it makes perfect sense. It's yeah. so well. That's why I never changed it. That's why I never went and thought and and elaborated on the idea because it was like a haiku. Right, right. It, just, it said what it needed right. to say. Uh, uh, Ann Wozniak says, this is perfect. Love your music. Water is wonderful setting with the music. So peaceful. Joanne says, uh, beautiful, Terry. So soothing and relaxing. Uh, Miss Rock 98, who was with us earlier today as well, Hello, Jimmy. <laughs> hello, everyone. Drop by to say hello. Pretty late here in Greece. She's watching from Greece. Hi. Mykonos. Nice. I love Mykonos, my favorite island in the world. It's beautiful. I Thanks. The part of Greece, too, that I love, too. But, oh, yeah. yeah. She, um, she's one of our newest lovities. She, she hopped aboard today, and uh, she's with us tonight. Thank you very much. I know it's very late where you are. and Thanks that's uh, Yeah. Thanks for staying up for us. Leslie Cummings says, beautiful, uh, which I think is absolutely spot on. Lovely, very uh, mellow from Christopher Joseph in Ohio. Juanita is beautiful. Love the scenery as well. Linda in Florida, absolutely beautiful. Kathy Short, Cleveland, made me feel so relaxed. Very nice, Terry from Mary Bishop, who's also in Florida. And uh, Karen says, the ocean is also my Zen place, as you saw in the Lovity Viewer video. I agree. Calming, 
That was so soothing and beautiful from Sherry. I tell you, lots of levity on this show. Always expressed, my friend. Uh, love the song and music from Suzette. Thanks, Suzette. Karen in Nova Scotia, Terry, that uh, piece would be perfect at the spa from meditation. Yeah, we're looking at ways to, to get it released to spas and meditation retreats, uh, yoga institutes, spa channels, et cetera. So we're, we're just starting that part of the, the journey with, with production and, and marketing. Makes you feel like you're sort of floating in outer space a little bit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> dear friend Reno, who's a, a wonderful uh, actor, acting coach, voiceover guy. He's a producer, you name it. He's watching it. It's a show tonight. Thanks, Jim and Terry. Good to see you, Reno. Uh, he was also a guest on the show too. Hi, Reno. Glad, glad you're enjoying everything. And uh, Sherry likes the backstory that you just shared with us, my friend. Thank really, you. really nice. Mm -hmm. That That is, uh, you know, music is really something because... Um, I was talking about it with somebody else the other night and we were talking about various, in I love instrumental too. Yeah, me too. I have a climate controlled storage unit that we pay monthly for that has hundreds and hundreds of LPs. Some of them, many of them are sealed, mm -hmm. real, real to real tapes, cassettes, CDs of all kinds of music. A wealth of it is- uh, I have a prop, give me one second. Yes, you've got a prop. <laughs> a prop, you know, we love props on this show. And you got to see his chair. I know everybody likes to see the chair. Oh, yes. Let's do a full screen. Tell us what we're seeing. It's my very first album. It's a sealed LP from 1988 called Bimini. Wow. Yeah, it's a limited. <laughs> there's probably about eight LPs left. <laughs> and you know, you look identical. Uh, yeah, I'm the same. <laughs> Everything's the same. <laughs> it's really cool. Really, yeah, I, cool. I love LPs. Yeah, I still uh, have. Yeah, yeah, and there it is. There it is. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. Where was that shot taken? That was taken by my friend Lenny Iger uh, in Northern California. I flew up there. He he was um, he used to teach at uh, Parsons uh, in New York. Uh, at the Art Institute, oh, and yeah. was very much into platinum printing and like one of he was the number one silver printing and platinum printing like old school you know uh, like Ansel Adams style oh, yeah printing uh, and he he was the one amazing photographer that I knew so mm. uh, I flew up there and he he did a photo shoot with me. Yeah. And, and they're asking, is that him on the calendar? Yeah, uh, not calendar. <laughs> I guess, yeah, that's, uh, that's Terry. And uh, when in I had nothing time on my hands, <laughs> right. That was, uh, that would have been October. My, my October. <laughs> October. Yeah, uh, October in the that calendar. is, that is Terry. Yes, folks. And uh, what I had yeah. nothing but time on my hands so I could work out like five days a week. It's probably why Karen said meow. <laughs> <laughs> well, Karen, thank you. Meow, and meow. Meow. <laughs> cool and and wow the first album thanks yeah. uh, so amazing sharing your first LP with us and uh, music really is healing and it has so many different uh, it it just speaks on so many different levels as well and uh, do you have a favorite instrument that's got to be tough I guess the guitar uh, since you're, you mean of my guitars or a favorite instrument for you is it the guitar it's guitar that's, that's at your that speaks to you absolutely. Yeah. It's guitar. Yeah. There's, there's no question. It's, what would it, follow that if there was uh wow. Um, I would say piano would be second. I, I love piano and percussion would be in there um, right after that. But I, but what, I guess what I would also say is strings. I love, I, I absolutely love strings. If you listen to some of my albums uh, you'll hear my string arranging. Uh, and it's one of my favorite things to do. That's actually why I got a, de a degree in arranging. That's why I went to Berkeley. I wanted to learn how to write for strings and horns. Uh, so I don't play the violin. I, I know where the notes are. You learn the, the technical end of notes. I don't play the trumpet, but I know where the notes are. Um, but but I, I absolutely love strings. But I would say my personal connection as a player is with guitar like the acoustic and electric guitars 
piano and percussion instruments. What kind of guitar was that that you were playing in that uh, in the video? Oh, that's a great question. It's a it's a very unique instrument. It's uh, it's built by a friend of mine, Rick Turner, uh, Renaissance Guitars, and it's an electric nylon string guitar. Mm. And uh, I've had it for years. Uh, anybody can buy them. Uh, his his claim to fame is he built the guitars uh, that Lindsey Buckingham uses for Fleetwood Mac. You oh. know, all those really cool electric guitars is weird. And his acoustic guitars too, the, the with that same shape. Um, it's up there on the wall. You is can that see, the one back there? Let's see. Yeah, it's the one that I'm pointing to up there. So it's got that really unique shape to it. So Rick Turner built that. And it's light as a feather and it sounds amazing. So Rick Turner. You know, when you were playing it in the video or for the purposes of the video, it, it had a lightness and airy sort of feel, a yeah. breathy feel to it, which again was perfect for that, uh, for that video. Um, that's a really, that's a cool one. It's great. Yeah. yeah. Had it for years. And by the way, uh, I, Rick ended up having me switch that guitar because he used to work for Gibson for any of you guitar freaks around the world or geeks, gear geeks. Uh, mm -hmm. He designed the Gibson Chet Atkins nylon string that a lot of people played. It was an electric nylon guitar mm -hmm. that a lot of people played in the 80s, myself included. He's designed a lot of guitars. He worked for the Grateful Dead. He designed the wall of sound, uh, uh, you know, background uh, concert system that they all used as well. And he's a, a master luthier and guitar builder. But um the the Chet Atkins that we all used to play in the 80s was really heavy. It was mahogany and it was heavier than a Les Paul. It was really thick. I had um, a bicycle accident years ago that was really bad and I just about broke my neck. Uh, I ended up with a spinal fusion and I have a titanium plate in the back of my neck. Uh, and I'm fortunate to be able to walk. Uh, I had to learn how to play guitar again. I had numbness in my hands for for years. And and Rick told me, he said, you need to sell your Chet Atkins and let me get you one of the the new Renaissance, the the new light models that that you see me playing. He said, because it's 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 basically hollow on the inside. So it's like light as a feather and it sounds even better and it looks really cool and I love it. It sounds amazing. So, mm. so I actually, <laughs> it's a funny story with this. Uh, Rick wanted me to have one of the, like the first ones, you know, so he sent me the prototype and I was playing it and then I was starting to get work and I needed it because people were expecting me to, to play it on the, on the gigs. I was playing with a couple Brazilian bands and it was a big part of the sound. I was playing electric guitar for the rock stuff and then electric nylon for, for that. And so he needed it back for the NAMM show, which is the trade show that they do every year where they sell instruments. And right. uh, so he needed the prototype back. So then he gave me, you know, the, the, you know, serial number two or whatever of, of the guitars, but then he needed that back for the NAMM show because he needed models to show. So I gave it back to him and then, it got all scratched up because people were playing it. So they, were, they had their belt buckles and it was a mess. So at the end of the show, he gave it back to me and it was a mess. So he ended up giving me the prototype back again. It took a, you know, it, and it ended up being quite a while before this ended up fully being my guitar. <laughs> it went so, through a little bit of a restoration and a rebirth. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I earned it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I want to share some more <laughs> of your spectacular music. And again, yeah, what we're sharing you. tonight is just scratching the surface. I, I love being a television guy too, is, you know, the connection to network television yeah. and film scores and commercials. And that's incredible to have been involved in that world. And I've always loved them. We actually talked to a couple of singers who were very big in the jingle singing industry. And I miss jingles and all of that sort yeah. of themes and jingles and that whole world. I always still hope that that comes back because even yeah. in, com in commercials, you would always be able to hum the jingle and know what the product was. You would hum the TV theme song and knew what show it was. And 
uh, we've sort of some of that has been slipping away a little bit and uh, call letters, you know, W X Y Z and all that stuff. I love that. I love all that stuff. I hope it, I hope it swings around a little bit in 2021. Yeah. We bring it back. <laughs> but uh, that's cool work too to be involved in all of that network, well, uh, you know, television, film scores. I mean, geez. You know what's what was sort of serendipity, but when the Bimini album came out. Yeah, so it's my my first album. I'm finally on the radio as an artist. And that's when I got my first TV job. Mm. And it was music directing for the late show on Fox. And it was it Oh, was, was that with Joan Rivers? It was right after Joan. It was that show. Yes. So when Joan finished her tenure, yeah. she she left the show. Yeah. But the show was still bought and paid for. Right. And they and had what, fill in guest hosts. They or, had fill in uh, guest hosts. Yeah, after yeah. that, and Jack Mack and the Heart Attack was the ba the new band. Right. They, they brought in a new band. They I brought me, that. So they brought me in as the music director, uh, oh, and they brought that. in Jack Mack. They just sort of revamped the show. Yeah. Uh, they had um, they had quite a few people kind of coming in and out as guest hosts, and then it ended up finally being Ross Schaefer who came down yes. from Seattle, and Ross is great. So, but that's where I learned how to music direct for TV. Right. You know, how to be on a headset, how to not get hit by a boom mic, how to show up and be at an office for five days a week, which I'd never done, you know, and have my own parking space, which was really weird. And, you know, yeah, all that stuff. And, uh, but, but, you know, to take my music directing skills that I have to apply them for television and out of that job uh, came because I was arranging and, and working with all these incredible artists. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and and we have proof of that. I want to show this photo. <laughs> there yeah, you are. Yeah. What, tell it what was happening there. That's a great shot of you. Actually, doing that. that is me conducting for Melissa Manchester's uh, The Fellas album because Melissa asked me to write an orchestral arrangement of Chances Are, uh, right. the Johnny Mathis song. And we reimagined the song. I got the the fortunate uh ask to to do the one song that was completely reimagined mm. everything else was a true homage to the original but she wanted to do something different with that and we we reimagined it as a more of a brazilian bossa nova you know like a little bit of a samba bossa and i brought a brazilian influence but with strings and woodwinds and and uh it was so that that was the day i was conducting the orchestra for right. that uh, but so Anyway, out of that, uh, working on The Late Show on Fox for that year, it was the first time I had ever had a five-day-a-week job, you know, like driving in. And that was, you know, I was going to the gym every morning before, you know, first thing in the morning, I'd get up, i go to the gym, I'd go to Fox TV. And well, I'd that makes sense because, you know, TV adds 10 pounds. <laughs> yeah. Well, also, you, you know, you need to stay in shape. Like, you need to train. Oh, because there's a lot of movement, yeah. There's a lot of movement. You need to really be physically in shape to tour and, and mentally to, mentally and to work in television. You, yes. it really, de it's demanding. Yeah. Uh, for, at least for me. It uh, is. Yeah. I, I second you know, you work in TV. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the ones who do it right, train for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I just, I actually just interviewed Verdine White of Earth, Wind and Fire for my, my podcast. He's going to be my first episode of this year. It'll be out in the next, two weeks Super. but he talks about training also you know because he's very active on stage you know as the bass player for earth wind and fire he trains you know he's in the gym he's running you know because it's it's basically a triathlon doing a yes. show like right so it's the same thing like you know doing a talk show um but i would do that i i would do the the work i'd you know we do a five day a week tv show i'd come home i'd make dinner i'd practice i'd pass out and mm -hmm. you know, wash, rinse, repeat. I did that, but that led to me then being recommended to do the Byron Allen show, where I oh, was. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, I, I was asked to then music direct that show with my own band, and I was writing all the music for that show, and and I was more, I became more of a personality on camera, you know, where I was interacting and, you know, and sort of co-hosting the show in, in a sense. Um, but absolutely leading the band, writing all the music and writing all the arrangements. And that was great. We did that for three years. It mm -hmm. was kind of <laughs> the band, it was called Terry Wallman and the Dream Band. And it kind of was the dream 
job for me because it it involved sort of the the I think the things that I love the most. You know, it's producing, arranging. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're talking about you love talking with people. Like it was the interacting with people. I had to interact with all of the artists. Collaborating. Collaborating. It was always collaborating and and then performing. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm performing to a live audience and we're performing in front of millions of people. And I'm writing songs and I'm playing pop music with the best artists in the world of every genre from, you know, MC Hammer to country artists to, you know, Whitney Houston, every, like everybody. You know, just absolute Richard. I mean, the, I mean, you've read my resume. A lot of the mm -hmm. those credits are from TV work. Yeah. Um, so it was, you know, pretty amazing few year run of, of being on camera. And I learned a lot of, by being on camera because I have a lot of actor friends who yeah. were great guides for me as right. to what to do and what not to do. Exactly. Do more exactly. of that, do less of this. Right. <laughs> It's always good to have the uh, the suggestions, yeah. the the constructive uh, criticism. Absolutely, yeah. um, we have some more music we want to share also with our audience here, our loveities. Tell us about uh, the background story on "Welcome to Paradise." Oh well, this is a song that um, I wrote with my friend for my uh, Elliot Wolf, who who also wrote uh, "Straight Up" and "Cold Hearted Snake" for Paul Abdul. So he's a mm. pop writer and we were friends back in the early eighties. He was one of my first friends I met when I moved to LA and we just used to write all the time. I wrote this song for my Bimini record, the one that I held up. And I thought when I did, when I decided to, to produce uh, my silver collection record, which was a 25 year retrospective that I, it'd be fun to take a song from the beginning of my career and reapproach it. And not because I felt like I didn't like what I did the first time. Um, I, I feel fortunate. Like I, there are a lot of artists who apologize for their first records, you know, because they, whatever. I don't. There's not a note I would change on the first record. I kind of feel, I, maybe I got lucky, but I was very prepared, but I also surrounded myself with great people. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't change a note. Yeah. Um, it was just, it's, it was perfect for what it was supposed to be. And I'm really proud of it. And so, but I still thought it would be fun to go back and pick a tune and just re-record re it 25 years later. And I thought that would be a fun, a fun one to do. So I re-recorded it. And in it, interestingly enough, I slowed it down a little bit, mm -hmm. which kind of makes sense because I'm 25 years older. It's got a little bit, you know, I, I went like really sort of techno -y back then. It was the one song that I went like with drum machines and all kinds of stuff in the 80s, you know, and I thought I'm going to go straight acoustic instruments. Um, I brought in um, John Robinson on drums, Abraham Laboriel on bass, Luis Conte percussion, Greg Manning on piano, and my buddy Dave Koz on sax. And I played acoustic and electric guitars. And we went in the studio and just had a total ball recording it. And then I thought it'd be fun to get the guys and just do a live video. And this is what you're saying with um, no sax, but the basic rhythm section. Mm. And we just cut it live uh, at a friend's studio. They offered, they said, hey, come on down and record. And we, we went and did it. And mm. here's yeah. one take, the guys live. You can see the joy and love between all of us. Oh, absolutely. All right, folks, everybody in Lovety land, we're gonna take you now to paradise. Welcome to Lovety Hall and welcome to paradise, Terry Woolman.
I just love those guys. And as much as they love the music, they love your smile, they're saying too. <laughs> well, thank you. That's it. You, you know, guys were having so much fun. It was so did. obvious, it's so genuine and so real. Reno sounds outstanding. Peace. Thank, thank you, you, Kathleen in New York. Reno's in Connecticut, Kathleen in New York. I so love the guitar. Really nice. Love this, Terry from Karen in Nova Scotia. Okay. Uh, you all look so happy together. Soulful from Ann Wozniak. Uh, great instrumental on the guitar. Thank you, um, what yeah. category would it be? Smooth jazz? Would you? What would you place that in? <laughs> I would place it in the music category. <laughs> but yeah, let's start um, with music. Yeah. Uh, and second to that, I would say melodic. Uh, but yes, smooth jazz, contemporary yeah. jazz. It's um, awesome. There's, there's, I love that sound. Uh, instrumental pop. I love that sound. Uh, it's yeah. awesome. Thank you. Um, it's, you know, I, I really love melodies. Yeah. You know, whether I'm writing a, a pop song with a lyric or yeah. writing an instrumental jazz song, I still, my goal is that you walk away humming the melody. You know, and that it puts a smile on your face or unless it's, you know, one of the, the occasional ballads where it just makes you feel, you know, something moving. Yeah. Well, you um, got some love coming in from Juanita in South Africa who says, oh. wow, we loving it. And you've got love coming in from Brazil. Ah. Um, they certainly know a good rhythm in Brazil. What a cool Saturday night. Jim and the gang, Terry, you're fantastic. Obrigado, Carla. Thank you. Loved it. So loved grooving to the music uh, from <laughs> Tina. And very nice from Kathy Short and Anne saying soulful as well. Yeah, I love all of this. And I, you know, but you'll laugh, but I also love, um, I, I love easy listening music too. I used to love the instrumentals, you know, uh, the orchestral takes on standards and pop songs too, just to hear the way that they, Right. These orchestras would interpret a pop song or a standard or a Christmas song and turn it into this whole right. other thing. Because, Love all that stuff. Because the melodies are so good. The melodies are so good. The, yeah. the Mancini's and right. Percy Faith and some of these other. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All great stuff. Absolutely uh, great stuff. And uh, uh, so the the thing about, you know, the smiles in that video, it's that's the real deal because. Yeah. We've been playing together for years. These these guys that uh, that you saw in that video, they're they're some of the best on the planet, literally, uh, and they're my dear friends. We've been recording together for years, and and I thought it'd be fun just to show everybody how much fun it is when we play together. You know, we really have a good time. We love each other. We enjoy it, and 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 the love and respect for each other is very deep, very very deep, and and also. Um, one, um, one of the comments mentioned guitar and the guitars. That's by the way, it's a Taylor guitar, and I that particular guitar uh, I've had for I've played for over twenty five years. It's a mm -hmm. Taylor nine twelve C. I've traveled the world with it. I love it, and and you know I'm so indebted to Taylor guitars, Diderio strings. Um, you know some of the companies I work with have really stood by me, but they you know it's a big part of my sound. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm, absolutely fantastic, my friend. And, you know, a real testament to all of this is what Sharon said, which is I'm going to hear Paradise in My Head all night in a good way. Perfect. Thanks, Sharon. Same <laughs> thing with Karen. Sharon and Karen. <laughs> uh, that will be in my head all night now. Uh, right. where, where can they find that? Where can you get that? Is it on a particular CD? Is it on yeah. Amazon, Spotify? Yeah, the best place to find that is on my Silver Collection record. That's the 25-year retrospective. Oh, it's on that one. Okay. Yeah, it is. And so is that this one? Yes. Uh, yeah, no, uh, that's the single. That's the um, single of it. Okay. You know, I think you've got the cover for Silver Collection. So that's the single of it. All right. Let's see if we have the cover of that one. I don't know if I have a cover of that one. I have. We do have this, but I know. 
That's that's because that's, that's last dance. Yeah. And we do have that one. And then we do have this one too, which I know is new. That's a joyful noise, my Christmas record. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that one too. Can we grab it really quick. Would that be helpful? Yeah, that'd be awesome if you have it. I I probably have it right here. Maybe Plus, they they, they want to see the empty chair. It's a big thing on our show because some of the guests walk to get water. Or they have to leave the room, so they they like to see the chair that you're in. <laughs> what model chair is that? <laughs> it's, a, you. it's a DW drum th throne. <laughs> there you go. Let's see that up close and personal so people can look for it. Silver collection. Very nice. So, and it's, uh, I, I recorded it specifically for this record. Uh, you can find it on iTunes and it's streaming. You can find it anywhere you can find music. If you want a signed copy of the CD, you can reach out to me through my website, terrywallman.com, and we can get one in the mail to you. I'll sign it for you. I'll be first in line. Yeah. <laughs> I love uh, that sound. But yeah. It's anywhere you can. Spotify. Karen asks Spotify. Absolutely. Spotify. You can hear it on Spotify. Uh, and again, there's links on my website. Absolutely. The website address? TerryWallman.com. So easy. It is. How did, how did you get that one? I waited 20 years to finally, and I got it this summer, finally got gymmasters.com because there's yeah. a there's a singer, a DJ, performer in England, because Masters is an English name, who had that name, gymmasters.com, for a billion years. And I don't know if he fell asleep at the wheel or something happened or he just That's gave that. up. Uh, and I had to go through the Netherlands, actually, to get it, a company in the Netherlands, and finally got, because I had .net, yeah. .tv, .live, .everything. <laughs> do, do you want to know the true answer to how I got it? How'd you get it? At when the internet started, like be, before everybody knew about the internet. When people were getting pizza.com, bible.com. <laughs> yeah. A friend of mine uh, named Sam Turcott worked in, um, worked for SGI for Silicon Graphics and uh, and uh, Sun Microsystems. He, he was in marketing and we did some projects together. As a matter of fact, I produced a dance pop record called Byla. That's a really cool like techno dance album. Uh, that's totally yeah. different than anybody would ever expect from me. It was really fun to do. Yeah. Um, but Sam had told me because they had these guys like the, you know, the military and all these computer companies, they had their own internet already. It had a different name, but he said, there's going to be something called the internet. You need to buy your name. And I said, I said, I told you that early, huh? Yeah, before oh. before anybody was doing it. And I said, why should I have to buy my name? It's my name. He goes, nope, somebody else is going to buy it, and you have to buy it before. And I trusted him, and I went and bought .net, .com, .blah blah blah blah, and also Mango Eater Music dot blah blah. So so I own my name. You know, it was some of the best business advice that oh. I had gotten and followed. Oh, absolutely. So I own my domains. How did you come up with the name for the company, Mango Eater? <laughs> That's a great story. <laughs> uh, when I made my Bimini album, uh, it was my first record, and I knew that I needed to start a publishing company and a production company. And and I thought long and hard about how to come up with a, a you know, I wasn't really business oriented. I mean, I was work oriented, but... Uh, I, I didn't come from a business family. My parents were school teachers and, and I, but I thought, well, this is a business I'm starting. It needs to be a name that I'm going to take with me for the rest of my life. And it should be something maybe kind of fun and playful, not too serious. And, and maybe something tropical because I'm from Miami, you know, some, something that I can relate to. So I made a list of like 20 names. It's kind of like naming a kid, you know, you know, coming up with all the names and, so I came up with all these names and none of them were Mango Eater Music, by the way. And I submitted, you know, the best name that I came up with to ASCAP, who I was with at the time for my publishing and waited 60 days, you know, for them to come back. And they said, that name's taken. And I was devastated. And I went back down the list again and then submitted another name. You know, happened again. Name was taken third time came around 
And I, I went, okay, well, mangoes. I love mangoes, you know, because growing up in Miami, mangoes would just fall off trees. You could knock on somebody's door where there'd be mangoes on somebody's front lawn and ask if they mind if you took some of the mangoes and they would give you a bag. And yeah. I'd be riding on my bicycle, you know, with a bag of like 20 mangoes. You know? And I, I think it's a lot smoother and sound than Cuban cigar eater productions. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so I put in, I thought, okay, well, mango music, that's really cool. So I put in for mango music. Uh, and, and by this time I developed like a phone relationship with this person who I'd never met at ASCAP, who was the one who was turning me down. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like three, four months into trying to name my company. So I'm, I'm, I'll try to make this short. I'll <laughs> get to the point, but it's such a funny story to me because I'd never met this person. So I thought, okay, mango music. That's really cool. I love it. I, I love it. I hope that's it. I was coming up with Pelican music and this and that, you know, Pink Flamingo, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So anyway, I never hear back from her and I go, so what's going on? So I, I call her and I said, Hey, this is Terry Wallman. I never heard back from you. And she goes, Oh, Oh, great news. You're mango eater music. And I said, that's not what I put in for. I said, mango music. And she said, I know, but mango was taken and I didn't have the heart to turn you down again. So I just put in for mango eater music because I thought you probably liked eating mangoes. <laughs> there you go. Same. I never met this woman. And she like came up with that. And I went, that's too funny. That's absolutely too funny because yes, I do love eating mangoes. And Maybe someday I'll tell that story on the Tonight Show. I mean, that's just too funny. I'm it. putting it on the Jim Masters show. It another, was another show. world premiere again. It is. I've actually never told that story publicly. Every show, I, I, I mark my words. Every episode, we either see the empty chair <laughs> or a guest tells us something that they've never said before anywhere, or they debut something on the show, whatever it may be, and it just comes and it's it's cool. I and mean, it's like a well, world premiere exclusive. You heard and it in before. hindsight, Jim. It's a way cooler name than Mango Music. <laughs> <laughs> Mango Eater Music is such a great name. People remember it at trade shows, and yeah. So I, cool. I started to hit the lotto on business names. You know, you really, really did. Um, huh. you, also, you also did with a really cool song um, that we're going to show here. And I want to bring it up on the, uh, the screen. Again, we've got a lot of great music. And you're going to perform live for us too, folks, So, uh, which is very generous uh, of Terry. Perfect. But... Um, this one here, is it uh, Abrogado Live? Oh, yeah. Yeah, tell us about that one. Well, um, this is for my friends in Brazil, actually. Um, we, I love, I love the, I love Portuguese. It's my favorite language. I think it's just, it's the most romantic language. I love Brazilian music. I've played with some, with Brazilian artists. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's so passionate and, and rhythmic and melodic and it's just wonderful so when i was recording my buddha's ear record i wanted to write a samba and so i ended up writing this song mm -hmm. and i had the chord progression in mind uh you know at songs whether they're I'm sh you've spoken to many songwriters uh, they come in various forms you know sometimes you wake up and there's the whole song you dream the complete song. Sometimes there's a lyric that comes first. Sometimes there's a melody. Sometimes there's a chord progression, a harmony, or a rhythm, or just a feeling. You know, Cassini's Last Dance, it's a song title and an emotional event that just happens and you know what it's supposed to feel like. You know, you don't know what it's gonna sound like. But so for me, I had this chord progression that was like a, a Brazilian sounding chord progression. And I wanted to write a unique melody. And I thought the best way to write it is away from the piano, away from the guitar, just away from an instrument. So I, I put a track and I you know, put it in my headphones and I would sing melodies while I would, was walking my dog, Ollie. You know, at the time I would just go for walks and I would sing melodies to the track. And I came up with this melody away from my instrument because I wanted it to be singable. I wanted it to just be not a guitar melody. I wanted it to be a, a melody melody. And um, 
This is Obrigado. Mm, mm, mm. I love it. Carla, who's watching in Brazil, you're going to love it on a Saturday night, just like you said. <laughs> this is for you. From right, Terry. <laughs> yeah. To you. Gonna, yeah, to you. Here it comes. Oh, in Brazil. Yeah. It's really fantastic. I was listening to it earlier today. Once again, Terry Woolman doing his thing live. <laughs> Thank you. 
It's like, <laughs> and that's why we go to the gym and work out. <laughs> that's <laughs> that was fantastic. That was fantastic, and the comments coming in uh, awesome. Uh, Juanita, yes, and Juanita in South Africa, awesome. Just add some beach and coconut drinks. Uh, <laughs> Saturday night fever, absolutely. Carla in Brazil, thumbs up, loving it. Uh, Woo, feeling the rhythm from Bernadette. Um, Sharon says, love watching musicians. My father owned a music store near Toledo and was a sax clarinet man. Brings back memories. Sharon, yeah. Yeah, Juanita loving it. Merlin in Ontario, Canada. She's tapping. Joey Ann says, this is awesome. Sherry, absolutely loving this. Chair dancing. <laughs> Cheers. Awesome. <laughs> dancing girls, yeah. <laughs> yeah, loving it. Yeah. Carla in Brazil says, yeah, she's loving it and uh, digging it for sure. Uh, Jim Masters TV, driving the cool vibes. We'll take that. Very cool from Kathleen in New York City. Bernadette, who's dancing with us. Awesome from <laughs> Anne Wozniak. I mean, everybody loving it. Really, really cool. So, I mean, that you guys were just having a ball there, huh? Totally. We were. The audience was having a blast. That's why that song just wouldn't end. <laughs> we just like, you know, because we were having too much fun. We were all having too much fun and and the audience was as well. Yeah, it was great. Nice and standing ovation and bravo and exactly. so wonderful. Really enjoyed that. Um, how did you get started? What was early on as a youth for you? Sometimes I ask this early in the game, but... Um, <laughs> What were some of the inspirations for you as a kid that got you loving music, appreciating music, learning music, performing music? I was uh, exposed to music as a as a young kid uh, in a traditional way, being forced to take guitar lessons <laughs> with my older brother, uh, and then piano lessons, uh, as a lot of kids were, you know, by well-meaning parents who wanted to. Uh, you know, broaden their their children's education with sports and art and, you know, Boy Scouts and, you know, various things to keep their kids out of trouble and, and keep them mentally and physically active. Uh, and it turned out that I had uh, an affinity, uh, a talent, and, and was drawn to music and really loved it. So I continued. Uh, and basically, as, as a kid, I started on guitar. Uh, then I was taking piano lessons at that point. From that point on, I really wanted to play the drums. That was the thing that, that I was the most excited about. My parents were the least excited about. Um, we had three boys in the family. I was the middle kid. And uh, they really didn't want more noise in the family. So they said that if I really wanted to play the drums, I needed to play on a practice pad for six months thinking that I wouldn't do it, but I did. So I took drum lessons for six months, learning paradiddles and being really disciplined about that. And then uh, they moved me to a snare drum from that point. And I played a snare drum for a year, still taking lessons. And, uh, and I thought if at this pace, I'm gonna be 40 years old by the time I get a full drum kit. <laughs> so they, they kind of wore me out on the idea that I was ever gonna be able to learn to play drums. Uh, so then, um, so then I just kind of went back to guitar and piano, uh, in junior high school, I tried clarinet in seventh grade. I wanted to play trumpet, uh, and they didn't really didn't want me to play trumpet. They wanted me to play flute. Mm. Uh, I thought that was kind of a girl instrument. Uh, it's too bad that I thought that because flute's a great instrument. It would have been a really wonderful thing to have learned how to play. Mine was uh, violin. Yeah, oh, that would have been great. That that was yeah. It. yeah. Um, that would have been great for me too. But so I ended up on clarinet, and it turns out that that was not my calling. Um, I, you know, and I thought it'd be really cool to play sax, but they didn't need sax players. So uh, I was last chair clarinet, uh, 
because you have to earn your place. And I just wasn't good at it. I practiced, um, but it just, you know, it, it really just wasn't my thing. So I did that for a year. Um, it was a great experience to be in a band, but it was not fun because I wasn't good at it. And I really wanted to be, play a different instrument and they didn't want me to. So it was restricting and, and not a great experience. But along the side, I was still learning guitar and piano on, on my own and, and learning songs from friends. And, and along the way, growing up in Miami, unbeknownst to myself, I was being exposed to world music. Mm. The, the yeah. sounds, um, the flavors, the the sounds, you know, the culinary, the, the very internationally yeah. cultural city. Yeah, it was. So I didn't know, uh, you know, I know I knew that I was being exposed to soul and R&B music because it was the 60s. So um, there wasn't really I mean, FM radio was starting, but like even like AM, like late at night, you could hear you could hear a DJ. You could hear the DJs. You know, say this is, you know, sixty-four seven a.m. They talk really low and yeah, yeah, exactly. Know, late at night, and they'd be playing yeah. Sly and the Family Stone, and like you know, like Otis Renning and all this really amazing stuff that I was just mesmerized by. So, I was really drawn to soul music, you know, more than yeah. anything. Yeah, I love soul. Yeah, I do too. But I was somehow I was picking up um, Caribbean and South American, and certainly Cuban music just in the air, you know, you would just drive down the street and you would hear it. So, uh, and, and some of it is just climate, you know, tropical music is tropical because of the heat, the ocean and the heat and the moist air and the Caribbean breeze. And so, you know, when you travel, you know, if you're in Mexico or South America or, you know, Mykonos and in Greece, or there's, there's, there is, there's certainly the Caribbean, you know, there, there's a familiar taste and smell yeah. and feeling Hawaii, you know, there's, you know, that, that's why it's no mystery that, um, you know, like the, you know, there's the ukulele in Hawaii, but the ukulele I learned descended from the Cavaquinho in Brazil, which is a steel string, four string, little tiny instrument that looks like an ukulele, which is nylon string, but it basically was an instrument that came from Africa. You know, it's it's a little steel string, tiny looking guitar, four string, and it's very specific sound. It was a slave instrument, but it migrated on the ships to Hawaii and then became a nylon string instrument. There's, you know, it's all very connected. You know the percussion instruments, the the sounds and the 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 music uh, from you know from the tropics is very connected. So early on in your youth, you were soaking all of that up, then, right? Without knowing it, yeah, Without I was soaking. realizing it, right? Yeah. So um, and then I, you know, I had friends who played music and were taking lessons. So my friends who were taking guitar lessons when they would come home from their, their lessons, I would get on my bike and ride over to their house and then they would teach me their lesson. So they were showing me their Joni Mitchell song yeah. that they learned with their op the altered tunings or, you know, I was learning from them. Mm. And then I had a uh, you know, great music teacher in high school. I was taking music class and drama. Uh, you know, I was taking theater and art class. I was learning how to make, you know, I was a, I was a creative. I wasn't sure that I was gonna be a musician but I was in plays, I was doing creative writing. Uh, you know, I was, again, learning how to throw pots and draw and paint and just, just, and then running. My dad was a phys ed teacher, so I was into sports. My parents didn't want me to play football. My mom didn't want me to, I really wanted to, but uh, in hindsight, they made a good choice. Yeah. They, didn't, they didn't want me to break my neck or, you know, the things that would have happened and very possibly. So um, I wasn't allowed to play football, so I ran track. Uh, and then when we were 15 years old, my dad was um, had become a school principal, and then he was on a sabbatical. And a sabbatical was what they used to do, where every seven years, if you were a teacher, you could take a year off, which was a really amazing thing. And you had the option to study, you know, go back to school and further your education, which you could do at 75% salary. 
if you wanted to travel, you could travel at 50% salary. If you just wanted to take a year off and just, you know, look at your navel or, you know, not do anything, you could just take the year off and recharge and, uh, and get your job back. And so my dad, um, for uh, financial reasons needed to go to school so he could still, you know, feed three kids and everything. But he decided to do that w while traveling. So he took my older brother and I to Mexico city. Mm. So I lived in Mexico city for six months when I was 15 and went to school there. And then I was exposed to Mexican music. And, and that's when I got serious about guitar. Mm. My, um, I bought a nylon string guitar when I was there. You know, my, I borrowed money from my dad. You know, I asked him if I could buy a guitar and, and, and part of it was prompting from my dad. I mean, I didn't have access to a piano and, you know, and I wanted to play and I didn't really have a guitar that I brought with me and, and I really wanted to play. And, and, you know, there were nylon guitars everywhere, you know, it, every folk, you know, Marcado and everything and yeah. just hanging on the wall. So, um, and my dad had said something to me that was made a profound impact, which is, he said, you know, you're, you are good at music. You know, you, you seem to really love it. And whether you make a career out of it or not, you might want to, you might want to start taking it a little bit more serious, like, you know, give it your attention. And he said, you know, whatever you do um, is fine with me. You know, if you want to be a garbage man, be the best garbage man you can be, you know, whatever you do with your life, commit to it, do it well. Right. Yeah. So, um, but he said, you know, regarding music, since you seem to have a gift for it, you know, you have a natural inclination for it, you might want to shit or get off the pot. Mm -hmm. And I was 15 and I was impressionable. And, and you know, for your parent to use profanity, you know, when they're giving you advice. Right. The, the uh, magic, yeah. You know, the arrow hit, you know, it went bam, you know, right to my heart. And, and I took it seriously and I thought, yeah, I should. Um, it's easier. Um, uh, there's a question you described Cavaquino. I'll get back to that in a second. That's nice. Yeah, that you wrote uh, that. Yeah. Uh, so, so basically, I I said, well, can you help me buy a guitar? And he goes, he said, I'll loan you the money. You can pay me back. Nice. You know, and and I did. So I bought a guitar. I found uh, somebody there in Mexico who started teaching me some things and and started practicing again every day. And then and then never stop on that. Um, the question was about the Cavaquinho. Yeah, I think it was a comment. She said that you described it really well. That's Carla in Brazil. Yeah, uh, it is. Yeah. And actually I, I do have a Cavaquinho that a friend of mine, um, believe it or not, Keb Mo, who's a blues artist, a Grammy award winning blues artist, yes. brought me back a Cavaquinho from brazil which was really kind of him he carried it on the plane with him wow. and uh, gave it to me as a gift and i played it on obrigado you know to the best of my ability uh, my apologies to all of my brazilian friends wow, who, that sounded who, really good. Who have mastered <laughs> the instrument, but i i did i wanted to play it so i i you know i figured out a cavaquinho part on it and made sure that that was one of the parts i played i played nylon string guitar for the rhythm I played the Cavaquinho for a secondary rhythm part. And then I played that red guitar that I was playing in the video for the, the melody. Now, now there's another incredible uh, song, Mandela. Yeah. This, this looks like you're at like a jazz, uh, smooth jazz fest or bash or something. Tell us about this one. Mandela, that's got a great story too. I had, I had made multiple albums starting with the Bimini album that uh, I showed during our show and tell earlier, <laughs> by the way, um, and all of these albums are available, please stream them, buy them. Uh, it's so important. It is so, so important to support artists, mm -hmm. uh, not just me, but any artist, uh, you know, uh, since we're not able to perform right, right now, uh, it's a big part of our livelihood and we want to still continue to make music. So at the very least stream and share and tell people about it. And uh, if you, this is a blatant self promotion, but it's it's yeah. a global promotion for all artists. If if Everybody. you like something, reach out, and we'll we'll sign our CDs and send them to you. And 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 uh, it's so you know, thank you in advance for for doing that. Absolutely, uh, Mandela. So I had 
you know, my career, I ended up in TV and I started doing other things and producing artists and was always writing and, and writing pop, <coughs> pop songs. And I was working with, speaking of Keb Mo on one of his records. And we were, had, we were friends and, and he said to me during a break when we were working on one of his songs, he said, when are you going to do another Terry Wallman album? And I said, you know, it's interesting that you've been saying that. And because I've been thinking about it and I'm, I'm just not really sure which direction to go because stylistically I can do a few different things. And, and, but it's something I, yeah, the fire starting to burn in my belly to do it. And he said, I think it's time. I really think it's time. You've been focusing on helping other artists and it's time for you to be doing your own music again. And I said, thanks. I think that's a great idea. He said, no, I think it's time right now. Like right now we should write a song. And so he's sort said, of like, or get off the pot. You're hearing that again. <laughs> yeah. So I said, okay. And he said, I said, when he said, let's write a song together. I said, I'd love to. He's when do you want to do it? He goes right now. Mm. We were working on his record. Yeah. And he went and got we two acoustic guitars. We sat on his back porch at that very moment. We stopped on working on his record. We sat on his back porch with two acoustic guitars and wrote Mandela right then, the two of us. Mm. And then we walked into his studio and put up a drum loop and just hit record so we could capture it, remember it. It wasn't the record, but just to document it. And he said, you just started your new record. You got one song. Congratulations. Incredible, huh? And then I went home and started, you know, developing that. And we decided at that time um, that it would be really cool to bring in our friend Mindy Aber, who's a wonderful sax player, oh, yeah. to, to play on, on the record. And I thought it'd be really kind of fun to do something in the contemporary jazz, smooth jazz world that would might surprise people, which is to feature Terry, you know, Terry Wallman featuring Keb Mo and Mindy Aber, because people forget that musicians are versatile. They can do more than one thing. So we thought that'd be really fun. Kind of like the mod squad, you know, right. and Mike and Julie, you right. know, <laughs> so, <laughs> look it up if you're not. <laughs> you know? right. and, Peggy so, Lipton. Yeah. Peggy Lipton. And, um, Michael Cole, who I had on my on my podcast, amazing and, interview. And Clarence, somebody the third. Clarence uh, Clemens the third. No, yeah. not Clarence Clemens. No. Clarence, Clarence, make the, uh, I'm so embarrassed. I remember the third of the Clarence. Yeah, he was a Broadway actor. Yes, yes, yeah. Uh, amazing, amazing actor. Uh, Clarence, uh, well, think of it. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> and and get back to you. And there it is. Um, but anyway, so we wrote it on, on the porch with two acoustic guitars, and then I recorded it with Kevmo and Midi Bear, and then uh, and then had the opportunity to perform it at a festival, not only with Mindy, but with uh, my friend Najee, who's a world-renowned sax player, uh, who's played with Prince, and I had played with him on TV years ago, and uh, we all just got up and played it together. It was really a blast. So I think here's a little excerpt uh, from that song and from that, that concert. Yeah, it's a great one, folks. You're going to enjoy it. That's also on the Silver Collection record. So that's the one to get if you want to hear some of these songs. They're that, oh, that's, on there. That's well. Silver Collection. Uh, the greatest hits. Yeah, yeah. It's loaded with a lot of good music. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, here we go, folks. Mandela, Terry Woolman, once again, knocking it out of the park. <laughs> Thank you.
Nazi. Mindy Hebert. Thank you, that's Mandela. Nice to see everybody. I'll be over there signing CDs. Have a great day. <laughs> And then after doing that, you got carpal tunnel syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> right. Kissing babies and shaking hands. That's <laughs> what good. I know. You That's know, a great sound. A great, great uh, song. Really nice. Thank my friend. Yeah. Thank you. Um, you know, it's that one of the things about playing festivals is the spontaneity factor. I mean, you could see me like turning around and giving direction to the band and everything. The very fact that, um, uh, that both Najee and Mindy were both there, you know, and that we amazing. Were, I love we were, both of them. Well, and getting to play together, that's not something you would typically do. No. It would be one or the other. And either one would be a, a wonderful event because they're they're both world class musicians and great people. You know, but the three of us together was just really completely spontaneous incredible and really fun and when earlier in the show when we were talking about collaborations one of those very special collaborations that's going on right now during covid is with Najee and I uh we recorded a song together that's going to be on this new album that I'm working on and he played flute on it and it's a it's a samba it's another brazilian song that i wrote specifically for Najee to play on because he and i've been talking since that performance, we've been talking about recording together. And so I wrote us a song and we recorded it remotely during COVID. So um, I'm really looking forward to sharing that with everybody. Another uh, world premiere announcement, folks, heard yeah. here on the Jim yeah. Master Show Live. Yeah, this yeah. Cool stuff. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. Um, I, I'll look for that. I've, I've been a big fan of uh, both Mindy and Najee. I've, a lot of He's amazing on the flute. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. 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 He's incredible. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. incredible. Um, Peter White, too. I love the guitarist Peter White. Do you know mm -hmm. Peter White in, from England? You know Peter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you have. Yeah. He, he's terrific, too. Mm -hmm. He's got a great sound. Um, you want to play something live for us, too, right? Yeah. Did you, you have something? Uh, before you do, tell us about the room that you're in. Everybody loves to know about the <laughs> setting that the guest is in, kind of like Edward R. Morrow and. Uh, people to people or places, whatever that show was called on CBS, where he went into the rooms of the I, uh, guests. This is my laboratory. This is, this is my writing and recording room uh, where, and actually I, I mix in here as well. Even um, the song that, that I arranged and produced for Dick Van Dyke for the, not for the Obit movie, the Carl Reiner movie, um, I we love Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> yeah, me too. Oh, he's he's amazing. He's absolutely wonderful human being. And but we mixed it in this room. We recorded it at Capitol. Did you really? Yeah. But we came back here and we we mixed it. We actually mixed the recording here in this room. Wow. So um, so a lot happens in this room. I compose yeah. in here. I mean, I I write anywhere, but this is where I record. This is where I start and finish my records. So, uh, you know, I've got a uh, piano over here that uh, you can't see and then uh, and then various instruments and you know I bring in I, I have a, a storage room as well that's uh, where I keep you know most of my guitars and then I bring what I need to the studio uh, but I I have pretty much what I need you can even see on the back wall there's a next to the Rick Turner guitar there's a vihuela which is a Mexican instrument, that little, <laughs> that little one. And then there's my, uh, my exotic electric guitar, my California classic. So there's always, there's, and there's an accordion. So there's always like eclectic instruments around that I can grab. There's a couple of kalimbas, little hand percussion instruments. <clears throat> I've got, uh, there's a whole shelf of percussion instruments over here. Uh, but this is, this is my writing and mixing studio. And you can see behind me, what you can't see is in front of me. There are more panels in front of me as well, but this room is acoustically treated so that, uh, you know, because you have a studio. So it's, um, so it's tuned. So it's, it's an accurate sounding room. So I can actually mix for film and TV and, and my records in here, uh, or, um, pre COVID would bring in engineers to work with me. Uh, we're doing that remotely as well now too. 
You know who's loving this entire evening and just wanted to pop in to say hello? George Burns. George! <laughs> Do you know, I have a George Burns story. I actually had the, the supreme privilege of working with him. You know, um, I was just about to say that if you had a George Burns story. Do and and he was one of um, I can count him on one hand <coughs> um, one of the few artists that I worked with in television who asked for me he he summoned for me really he, he had you know we always would speak before to talk over the arrangements or the keys I would sometimes speak with the artist oftentimes with their managers or music directors um, when it was somebody like a George Burns type of celebrity, I generally wouldn't speak with them directly. Sure. I would speak to the label or, or their music director. But so I hadn't met him prior to performing with him. But when he showed up at NBC, he asked for me before the show. And I went to his dressing room and knocked on the door and he had me come in. He was smoking a cigar and no surprise. And he asked me to sit down and we talked. And he just wanted to get to know me. He started by thanking me for in advance for, you know, working with the band and preparing everybody. And we had, he was such a gentleman. Yeah. Like very classy. Yeah. Because like I said, you know, I worked in television on camera doing that for about four years, two different talk shows. I could count them on one hand, the people who asked to meet me prior to the show. And, and he was one lovely, lovely man. Yeah. Yeah. And really fun to work with. Yeah, that's amazing. A great story. Great yeah. story. I'm glad that uh, triggered that for you. It did. <laughs> See? What, uh, tell us about the guitar that's in your hand and what you're going to play for us. So this is the one that you've been seeing in some of these videos. This is the close-up of it. It's, I'm going to give you a really close look. It's a Taylor 912C. Um, it's got some, you can see some wear and tear on it. Um, it has been around, it's got beautiful abalone inlay and I've had it since my Bimini, uh, not my Bimini, my Buddha's ear record. Um, I was looking for a specific sound. I wanted something that was just kind of unique, you know, for the sound of the, the, the album. And I'd been hearing great things about Taylor and I, I reached out to the artist rep and described what I was looking for. And they sent me this particular guitar uh, to try. And I tried it and it was amazing. And I recorded the whole record with it and then said, well, how do I keep this? I mean, what do we need to do so that I can not send this back? And I became an endorsee and, and, I've been with them ever since, and I love this instrument. It literally has been around the world with me. And uh, anytime I've worn it out or damaged it, they've fixed it. And, and I bet you treat it like a child. I do. Like a baby. Like a baby. Yeah. But the thing that they said to me, uh, because it was like, it was a little fancy for my taste, you know, with all this abalone and everything, you know, I've grown into it. But when, you know, I love the way it sounded. But when, when I recorded with it, I said, I want a guitar like this, but something that's not so flashy because uh, it's not really my style. A little more subdued, yeah. Subdued because it was like, hey, look at me, you know. Uh, I, uh, you know, I got comfortable with it and now I love it and it looks great on TV and it, and it looks great. It just looks, it's pretty. I enjoyed the beauty of it. It is, right, Kathy, it's a beautiful guitar. It was a little distracting. It felt like I, I just wasn't my personality at the time. Um, and I, again, now I just love the beauty of it. And yeah. why not? Why not play a beautiful instrument? But the thing is, but I had asked them, I said, do you have one that that same wood and sounds is great, but doesn't look like that? And they go, nope, <laughs> that's that's the way that model comes, you know? That's it. <laughs> so I grew into it and now I, I absolutely love it. But they said, here's the deal. If if we work with you, especially with our higher end, and our higher end instruments, we're gonna make sure that this isn't a guitar that never leaves your studio. Mm -hmm. We we don't want you to have it and it stays in your studio, right? Hanging on the wall only, you know, for you to see or in the closet for sessions. We want you to not be afraid to use it. We want you to take it with you, and and not be afraid to use it. Not be afraid, you know, if anything happens, we'll fix it. Right. And they have, they have. So and so I literally, this is the one that I take on a plane with me. 
Very nice. Uh, Very nice. To bring an acoustic guitar. So, so why don't I just play a solo acoustic guitar piece right now? Yeah, absolutely. Right. So, and this one, uh, it's called, I'm, you know, something, let me see if it's on, if it's on this album. No, it's it's not on Silver Collection, but you can certainly find this uh, many places. It's this is called the Blue Pearl, uh, and uh, it's on my Buddha's Ear record, and of and of course it's streaming as well. Can you hear this? Okay. Very nice. Yeah. That's really beautiful. Bravo, bravo. That is really, really beautiful. Wow. That sort of just makes you, I don't know, it's very reflective too. It has a reflective uh, sense to it. That's what I was picking up as I was listening to it. It's um, it's so clear and crisp and clean too. You know, it, it almost, it doesn't really need any, you know, you could have accompaniment with it, but it's so perfect as it is you know there's there there's something about acoustic guitar there's there's nothing to hide behind you know right. it's, it's very revealing and uh you know i've i've sort of i haven't sort of i i've really enjoyed for each album uh i'm i always make sure to write a new acoustic piece i challenge myself to write an acoustic piece and it's typically something that's beyond my capability of playing. <laughs> so <laughs> um, as any seasoned musician will do, they're always kind of pushing the boundaries mm -hmm. of what they're capable of. And, and then I, then I learn it. And then uh, as a matter of fact, I'm working on a new piece, you know, for this current album that I haven't recorded yet. Uh, but I really enjoy it. I, I love 
I love acoustic instruments and uh, and I wrote a dedication. I, I don't have it written down in front of me, but for the Cassini's Last Dance album, because it's an acoustic album. Uh, and and don't get me wrong, uh, I have a black belt in karate and and I love rocking and you know, and you know, I have a song called No Problem that's a blues <laughs> rock shuffle with Mindy A. Barra that we played. So I encourage you to go check that out to see the other side. You know, and I love a good funk tune and and all that stuff. Uh, there's going to be some fun surprises on the new record with that too. But but I but I I truly love acoustic guitar. You know, and there's something. The quote is something like um, it goes something like this. I'm sorry I didn't write it out to to read it verbatim, but um, but there's something about acoustic instruments that reveal the truth of an artist and the the soul of a guitarist and and these songs are what happens to me when i listen to my instruments as they whisper to me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know that that kind of describes the relationship i have with these instruments yeah they're hanging on the walls they they speak to me you know and there's melodies that come out of them and and i um you know, I, they do reveal themselves to me as, as music does in, in all forms. So does rock music. And and uh, you reveal yourselves yourself to them as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's a collaboration with it's, a song. A, right. A relationship between the two. I, uh, I've mentioned this on the show before, but this is making me think of this. Um, you were talking about the string instruments and I, I interviewed in my professional world, uh, a Juilliard grad cellist mm -hmm. and, um, some of the viewers may have heard this before, but um, I was telling the cellist that um, for some reason, even since when I was a kid, whenever I hear that really deep, warm, uh, all uh, sort of melancholy sound of the cello, uh, this this authoritative, warm, heartfelt sensation of the cello, it literally stops traffic for me. Oh yeah, I could be anywhere. I could yeah. hear it in Christmas music. I can hear it anywhere, and when I hear that sound at a wedding, at a funeral, anywhere, yeah, it stops. Uh, like I hear it, and it goes in, and it goes in. So I said to the cellist, I said, um, "This may sound strange to you," and he said, "Well, throw it at me. We'll see." He says, "I've heard a lot of things." He said, "I said to him." when I hear the sound of the cello, for some reason for me, um, I would say that if the heart, the human heart could make a sound that replicated an instrument, that melancholy, deep, warm sound of the cello to me is the heart. If the heart could speak the sound of an instrument, it's that warm, real, powerful, encompassing sound of the cello. And he said, "Well, that makes total sense. That that's 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 a given. We I understand that. Doesn't that's not crazy, Jim? No, said, well, why?" He said, "Because the the cello is the closest instrument in sound to the human voice. Mm -hmm. So that's why you're humanizing it." Wow, that makes sense. Yeah, that sound of the cello. There's a, a song that I wrote and arranged for cello quartet that you would probably love it's it's called 1111 uh and i encourage you to look it up after the show yeah i will you uh, know who's a, a, right. a favorite of mine uh, david darling yeah yeah he's yeah. wonderful he's, he's got this uh song children and it's it's sort of repetitive mm -hmm. you know it's sort of it's melodic and it's this almost the same thing over and over but it just is like wow you're like yeah Really, it's called Children, and it's by David Darling. Really, really cool. And we've used it for some uh, family events and things of that nature. And uh, we actually used it at a funeral, and it just knocked everybody on their feet. Uh, it was just one of the – it just – sometimes music, especially instrumental, mm -hmm. s can say even more than words can. Yeah, right. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Very much so. Yeah, yeah. So how now? How do you, as the expert musician, how do you translate that? How do you explain uh, musically what I just said about how that can be? 
the part about uh, how the, the in instrumental sometimes can say even more, can speak even more volumes more than even the words. Because um, the, you know, the quote, as trite as it might sound, music is the instrumental, is the universal language. Right. It, it is. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it supersedes verbal languages. Um, people, there have been studies. Yeah, but, but you can go to any country in the world. You can go into any jungle or into any small village where there's no way to communicate verbally, but when people start beating on things and, you know, hitting logs and somebody passes you a log and you can join in, you can communicate. You, you were having a conversation. It's a, it's a dialogue, mm -hmm. you know, and the, you know, the original instrument was the voice, you know, grunting, you know, cavemen, you know, grunting and screaming and yelling for danger. And, and some, some people still do that today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they did it yeah. this week. <laughs> yes. Yeah, some of them hold, you know, high office as well in our country. Yes. Yes. And the, but then the second, you know, instrument after the voice and singing, humming, making sounds to oneself was hitting, hitting, beating a log mm. you know, with a bone. You know, and some of it was, you know, to signal that food was ready or that, you know, danger or hide, you know, they were, they, they, it was used for communication, but it was, it was music. So, the, you know, there's the historical, um, cultural aspect of it. But the other thing is when you take the words out of the equation, it's like, it's kind of like gazing into somebody's eyes. You know, if you, are looking at somebody and you're not speaking, the experience is different with that person. You know, you you are taking in the essence of somebody. You might be sort of filling in your own blank with them. You might be seeing them truly for who they are for the first time. Um, you might be imposing your own uh, point of view on who you think they are. But But the thing is, you're not being distracted by words, you know, you're having your own experience with them. So, you know, words can, can be a distraction. And when you just have a melody that can touch something in you, or not even a melody, but a sound, the sound of a cello, you know, or the sound of a, a just a note, you know, letting it ring. That's, that's why the, you know, when you're in meditation and somebody hits a gong, you know, or, you know, a chime or a water bowl, you know, there's tones, you know, it's to get your attention. It's to, to create like a, an emotional shift and it does things, you know, it sort of clears the palate uh, to get your attention so that you can focus, so that you can listen, so you can hear from a different place, you know, and it's kind of, you stop the chatter you know, the chatter of words. So, but you also get to, you know, when you take words away from the story, then you get to, imp you get to insert your own story mm -hmm. into what, whatever's going on. Did you want to insert a little bit more uh, haphazardly there while you've got that beautiful instrument strapped ah. to you? <laughs> Now you set that up. That was a great <laughs> segue. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now I actually want to uh, thank you for the the opportunity to do that. I want to uh, I want to talk about this other video uh, that, and I want to talk about my podcast. Yes, they're yes. both they're they're both things that are near and dear to me. Yeah, uh, you know the, the video. Uh, Beautiful Sound of Us was another distraction, or it wasn't a distraction. It was a change of course in in during COVID, during the pandemic. It was a change of uh, what demanded my attention, and and that was the election. You know, that was the sure. yeah. Um, that was what's going on in our country, and I felt compelled to 
do my small part yeah and to to reach out to other artists around the world to join me 33 artists joined me mm. um, um, around the country and some from other countries to um it, to simply empower and encourage people to vote to yeah. encourage everyone to vote and to to remind people that every voice matters mm -hmm. and i think it's a message that has gotten lost in the shuffle I think people forget that. They don't understand that. Right. The electoral college is completely confusing and distracting. Uh, you know, minorities uh, feel beaten down. Um, there's, there's so much uh, discourse and anger uh, and hostility that's going on in our country right now. Uh, it was it really showed itself clearly at the Capitol the other day uh, and wherever people stand politically uh, people still forget the message. Uh, and the message is that every voice matters and, and people confuse the message because every voice matters doesn't mean that you get to go and speak your voice with violence and destruction. That's not listening to each other. That's not sharing your point of view. That's not, um, spreading and you can feel free to disagree with me um, but you know wearing shirts that that you know symbolize uh, Nazi regimes and anti-semitism and you know there weren't enough Jews killed in the Holocaust you know all like the the subculture things and this doesn't define everybody who was protesting at the Capitol the other day but you have no business like breaking down doors and, and windows and uh, to desecrate the Capitol, you know, uh, regardless of, of where you stand politically. And it's disgraceful. I agree. It was, it was ridiculous. Yeah. It was ridiculous. And, yeah. um, but and, that solves nothing. Right. And uh, this song was, I, I co-wrote uh, with two, two writers, Lilo at Fox and Ray Jupiter uh, and then I rewrote the lyrics to the verses after watching uh, Kamala Harris and Joe Biden's inaugural acceptance speeches. I just started writing frantically and, and then like, you know, got up the next morning. At, I couldn't sleep. And I just started writing and, and it came in the form of spoken word and rap, um, which is not typically how I write. I'm not a rap artist. Um, but I did have, thank you, Karen. It is very sad. It is very sad wherever you stand. Um, and uh, very clear about where I stand, but, um, but you know, it's really, it's, it's, it's so much about um, dialogue and listening and, and not people hating each other. And, and, mm -hmm. and, but so the thing is I, uh, in this last documentary that I worked on, uh, it was called the Bronx USA. And I had the opportunity to work with this wonderful artist, Donald Weber Jr., who was one of the stars of Hamilton on the Broadway cast. And he's a, a singer, actor, uh, and also a great rapper, spoken word as well. And I heard his voice in my head as I was writing these. I just kind of, because I knew him because I had worked with him in the studio. So he's kind of the template. So I just, I didn't resist it because again, when you open yourself up to creating music or art, you, you, you let it reveal itself to you and you, and, and you go with it, you know, and, and see where it goes. It takes courage to do that uh, and skill um, and just being open-minded and open-hearted, but I went with it and I, I let it take me where it took me. And then I realized that uh, it it was something that was a form that was valid and it was different than what I had expected, but it said what I really needed to say. So I reached out to my friend, to Donald Weber Jr. And I said, I have this idea and I wanted to run it by you and see if you might be interested in singing this for me. I told him what it was about. He said, absolutely, let me hear it. I sent it to him. He loved it and said he would sing it. He sang it remotely, safely. You know, I, I demoed it for him, sent him the track. He recorded it at home. 
sent it back to me, gave him a couple notes. We, we, and it was, you know, near perfect when he sent it to me because he's brilliant. And then he said, we should do a video. And I said, I so agree. I know exactly what I want to do. What do you want to do? And we were, we were completely in sync on it. And out of that, I became a video director and producer, <laughs> which, which is another, you know, COVID gift, you know, COVID so, learning, uh, right. <laughs> skill. Curve. But I was, um, driven, obsessed. This was really important to me. Yeah. Then my muse was speaking to me and I was yeah. my passion and, and my love for, um, our country. And so, uh, I started reaching out to other artists and friends, um, Melissa Manchester included my wife, Melanie, uh, we recorded all the, the um, ensemble vocals here with with Melanie Taylor, my wife, who's a, a very established touring singer and artist and uh, who has sung with Barry Manilow and Aerosmith and John Mayer. And, and she was a harlot for 10 years with Bette Midler. So she's, um, I have the luxury of, of you know, being married to a world-class singer. So we stacked all the vocals together. Oh, thank you, Karen. <laughs> um, more talents than I knew I had um, as the, the list is growing out of just, you know, being resourceful. Uh, but so anyway, um, I started reaching out to people and this video came together and everybody uh, very passionately, uh, without me asking where they stood politically, because it didn't matter to me, because that wasn't the point. Uh, all these wonderful artists showed up and we created this video. Uh, I reached out to a young filmmaker friend of mine, Powell Robinson, who agreed to edit it. Oh, there's Melanie. <laughs> uh, That's your it, lovely wife. Yeah. Yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah. We, uh, I talked her into doing a, a virtual Christmas special uh, with me because we just felt like we needed to, since we couldn't do our annual holiday shows, we, we miss seeing everybody. So we, that's up on YouTube. Uh, uh, by the way, go to my Instagram at Terry Wallman and my YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash Terry Wallman. You can, you can find this, you can hear Melanie, uh, that, uh, but anyway, Melanie did a beautiful job singing and as did, um, Ray Jupiter who sang the lead with Donald Weber Jr. And, and we did this, um, very passionate labor of love and, I'm so proud of all of us for doing this and we just put it out there. And, uh, and, you know, I think it made its mark, you know, it, it, it really touched, touched some people along the way. And uh, again, I'm really proud that we were able to do it. And uh, I think it, it's okay. I don't know about copyright and all that. Is it okay to play it? You think we have it here? Queued uh, up. I know that it's okay because I own the master. I, so because I, I created it and produced it. So, so yeah. It's yours. And distrib I, distribution and all that. Sometimes the distributors are the ones that sort of dive in there. You're looking at the distributor. This so, is so he's on the, he, so he's on the guy that you see when you pass by in the morning with the lemonade stand and the CDs. That's him. He's distributing it. <laughs> this was literally, this was, you know, mom and pop. Mom uh, and pop. Video. It looks. It looks like a, like a you know million dollars because we oh, all yeah. you know everybody knows what they're doing. But yeah, yeah you, you have our blessing to share all that. Right. All right, here we go, folks. Oh, we'll start right here. Beautiful sound of us being with us. We really sincerely hope Thank that you. you've enjoyed uh, listening and watching as much as we've enjoyed performing and sharing with you. This has really been a treat because we normally would be performing out in yeah. the world, but since we don't. Uh, have that option right now. What a gift to come to you in your living rooms. It's been really special. Yeah. We were trying to figure out how to, how to end the show. And, yeah. um, you know, this, what we decided to do was sort of a bonus track. If you little will. parting gift, yeah, little parting <laughs> gift. Exactly. Right. So, you know, this isn't a Christmas song and that's okay, mm -hmm. but it certainly speaks to the spirit of Christmas and the holidays and, and, um, where we are, where we are right now. So I'll let Terry tell you a little bit more about it, and we'll, then we'll we'll say good night. <laughs> I felt compelled to write this song, co-write this song, and to produce it. And the intention was was very simple, but extremely clear. Basically, it's just that every voice matters, mm -hmm. and that we are all in this together. We are all one, and every voice counts. 
So we had a 33 voice choir. Everyone donated their time yeah. happily. It's gorgeous. It's it's very moving and very powerful. It was powerful to be a part of as uh, we both, of course, sang yeah. and, and performed on it. We hope that you enjoy it in the spirit in which we're offering it. So everybody, thank you again for being here and please enjoy beautiful sound of us. See you later. Take good care. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> Yo, listen, I finally see someone who looks like me standing proud and strong on my, my TV saying it's no mystery we can change the course of history with our passion and integrity be assured it's time for our voices to be heard crushing fences tearing down the walls we are a chain of love that connects us all can you hear the The most beautiful sound of us. The most beautiful sound of us. Yo, lifting up the veil, lift the veil, up. revealing all the, lies all the lies as we dedicate this moment to. to Exercise the power, power. and privilege, privilege that every person has. Oh yeah! If we vote, then we won, Woo! and we're ready for the change, change that has, has begun. Be good. Good. We're ready. Yeah. Crushing fences, Crushing tearing down the walls. Tearing down the walls. We are chain of love that connects us all. Can you hear the call? Most beautiful sound of Really beautiful, beautiful sound of us. Wow. Yeah, it was quite moving to to be a part of that. And how long did it take to put that together? Uh, I think I got that got it done in about probably about three weeks. Wow. Maybe four. I, I don't remember because it was non. It was round the clock. Might have taken a month. Yeah. And that's your other one. Yeah. 
Um, da, 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 da. Can't, yeah. go, can't go wrong with Christmas music. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe four weeks, but it like nonstop. I mean, it became, I, I was obsessed. I just had to get it out and, and the, the learning curve was huge on how to put it all together. Yeah. And how to coordinate that many people remotely. Absolutely. You know, and get, you know, just to make sure it all connected. Yeah. You know, you're a producer. That's it's it's, right. re, it's detail oriented. It's it's very there, much. It's I mean, it's creative. You still need to guide everybody but artistically. A lot of moving parts. Yeah. The, you know, wear this color shirt or don't wear this or do that or you know, um and hold the camera this way and not that way and, and all of those things. But um you know, it, it's I'm just like I said, I'm so proud of um uh, of everybody oh, of this yeah group of artists and look what they're saying that was totally amazing definition of lovity Rini Katz in New York City cabaret star Kathy uh, Short in Cleveland claps and hearts a great job from Allison Tillman uh, Merlin in Ontario Canada clapping um, Juanita South Africa perfectly splendid and Wozniak beautiful um, Mary Bishop in Florida, your old stomping grounds. Fabulous, fantastic, wonderful. Just love this song. Mm -hmm. Karen, uh, incredible. Uh, Linda O'Dell, what a refreshing song and music. A sharing of love. Mona says, that sounds awesome. Claps and hearts from Karen. So powerful from Bernadette. Truly moving. Uh, Carla in Brazil. Uh, awesome. Uh, wow, this is incredible, Terry. Um, really touching people in a lot of different ways. And Rainy Katz saying, we need that right now. More people need to see that. And uh, Terry, you are most definitely a, a top levity, sir. Top levity. Wow. You, you've reached a top levity quickly. Wow, I'm, I'm grateful. Thank you. Oh, hey, by the way, everybody, you can download the song, the single on iTunes. So if you want to hear it again, uh, you can easily get it. The other thing is if you want to see the video again, you can just go to my YouTube channel and it's there for you to stream as many times as you want. And I only ask of you one, two things. Please hit subscribe because that's the only way that artists get paid with YouTube is we need to get my numbers over a thousand mm. for subscriptions. So if, if you want to support the song in the video, just hit subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. And it's another great way to support artists right now during the pandemic. Um, and you don't get spammed and you don't get it. You know, you just hit subscribe. Um, but share it with everybody um, because we made that video for you. You know, so. For the world, um, yeah. The world. And Cassini's Last Dance video is on the YouTube channel as well. But but I, I appreciate that. Uh, that it's meaningful to you as well is certainly meaning meaningful for us. And, uh, you know, it's so interesting just to be watching, uh, you know, watching an inaugural speech, you know, an acceptance speech and then grab a pencil and start writing. And then it turned into what you just saw. What we just saw. What are some of the other things, the blessings and joys in your life, Terry, that continue to move you, to inspire you, to to create in the way that you do so beautifully? Well, certainly Melanie, my wife, you know, just, you know, being uh, isolated with her is is a great blessing. Normally, I mean, she she sings in Barry Manilow, sings and dances in Barry Manilow's band. So she typically would have been gone for a good part of this year. Uh, so... Um, we're, we are spending more time than we've ever spent together. We just spent our first New Year together since we've known each other. We've never had a New Year's together, New Year's Eve together, because I'm typically the one who's performing on New Year's Eve. Um, so, you know, things like that uh, are just beautiful. Uh, you know, having um, an opportunity to continue my podcast, um, Making It With Terry Wallman, is a real blessing uh, because again the access that to the kind of artists that you and I both have uh, right now and the kind of conversations that we're having have a new depth. Um, you know, again, like my first guest this year is Verdine White and and his wife Shelley White. Um, 
you know, both amazing hit writers, but to talk about what this year has been for them, um, not only artistically and as a family, um, but they're, you know, they're also doing food drops off for the food drop offs for the community um, because they, they have a community center that they can't go to anymore, but they're, they're punting, you know, they're still doing things for the community. Uh, you know, um, I just um, interviewed uh, today, it's going to be my second guest, uh, one of the local mayors, um, uh, mayor of Downey, California, uh, just talking about what's going on locally and mm. and his perspective as a politician, you know, to have the opportunity to speak to a politician. Again, sure. the access, um, even, you know, you know, me, this is a blessing that I have a couple of hours to be able to sit with you. You know, I mean, I've got a, a oh yeah, thank you, and uh, as as do I. I mean, I've got a, a long list of self-imposed deadlines and things that I'm working yeah. on. But but you know, to have the luxury of long conversations, um, meaningful conversations with people, or the you know the luxury to be able to collaborate with other artists uh, and to support each other. I just I just got uh, an email from a, an artist in Italy who's a a really talented musician who I know and asking if I would play on a song of his, you know, for his new album. And I just sent him a track yesterday. Wonderful. You know, like things yeah. like that. They're, yeah. you know, they're, they're collaboration. It comes back to collaboration, which you started everything with on this conversation, collaboration, relationships, fostering relationships, mm -hmm. um, sharing compassion, empathy. I've mentioned, you've probably heard me say on the show multiple times with other guests that with everything that we've been through in the last several months, which actually feels like a decade, yeah. I'm hoping, cause you know, I think that there was a, a meeting of several minds that came together, maybe a divine, maybe mother nature and planet earth. Mm -hmm. And they said, you know what, everybody stop. We don't like the direction you're headed in. We don't like the way you're treating each other right. with all the, the, the hate and the violence and the, the shootings in schools and the divisiveness and just all the stuff that's going on, as well as, you know, the way you're treating the earth and everything else. Yeah. So here's what we're going to do. Divine mother nature, planet earth, three big ones. Boom. We're going to come at you and we're going to throw in a pandemic, economic situation, civil unrest, political strife, whatever we can. And we're going to throw it at you all at the same time time globally we want to see how you're going to handle this and what are you going to do are right. you going to be the worst of the worst or the best of the best we have seen the worst of the worst but we've also seen elements of the best of the best yeah. so my hope with all of this because i think we were social distancing before we were forced to social distance and and it's important social distance for our health, are my we, health, we have health. health. oh yeah, yeah we tapped out early we're doing that masks and everything else yeah. but we were sort of social distancing even before that because we had our heads stuck in cell phones everybody's stuck on social media people mm -hmm. not necessarily commuting you go to a restaurant everybody's on a cell phone nobody's really talking anymore and hmm. so it's uh my hope is that we rise out of the ashes more empathetic more Me loving mm -hmm. kinder we listen more as opposed mm -hmm. to speaking and yelling we listen, we come to the table. I'm a Libra, so I'm balanced in harmony. <laughs> so we, yeah, yeah. See, that makes sense. <laughs> That's no wonder why. Now, now that just sums up this evening beautifully. I understand now. October uh, 20th. September 24th. So you're right. right. Yeah. Uh, and Libras are always looking for balance, for harmony. Mm -hmm. We see both sides of a question. Right. We tend to be sympathetic prophetic all of those things that's prophetic not pathetic folks Pro <laughs> prophetic there's a difference there's others that might be pathetic uh but there's a certain sensibility and uh so and healers and creators and collaborators mm -hmm. and uh hosts and uh i think that i hope that we really rise out of this uh not going back to you know people saying when do we return to normal normal wasn't so hot i yeah. hope there's a better, I hope we've learned from this. And because this has been a real pivot, this has been a real time to uh, take a look at all of our lives individually and collectively to see what we want to do with the rest of our lives, how we want our lives to play out and the people we want in our lives and the choices that we make. As horrific as all of this has been in, 
unfortunately into 2021 continues to be. Um, I'm hoping that people are looking at themselves, possibly saying, well, you know, this has also been a wonderful opportunity to breathe, to pause, to bake that bread, to spend time with loved ones when you can, who are in the house, to uh, take up that hobby, to do that thing you've always wanted to do that you've been shrugging, write that book, whatever it is. You know what and else though, Jim, in addition to beautiful. that? And, and I'm in complete agreement with you. In addition to that, it's also a time to sit in discomfort. Uh, yes. It's so important because we can't go back to sleep. You no. know, especially, and I'm speaking to, um, I'm, I'm speaking to all the racial div divisiveness, you know, and, and of course I'm, I'm extra sensitive to it because I'm in, in a mixed marriage. Uh, so I have, you know, a black side of my family as well. And so I, I see it through their eyes as well. And, and I see their pain and the pain yeah. they've been carrying their whole lifetime. Yeah. Um, but it's, you know, it's not a time for us to, to walk away from being uncomfortable. Right. It's a, it's a time to, to stay uncomfortable and, and read, books and watch movies and ask questions and you know mm. not just ask our black friends or friends of color but to you know we can ask them for a list of recommended reading and and things like that but but to stay uncomfortable for a minute we can't go back to sleep mm -mm. no right it's easy uh to once hopefully things smooth out to go back to what was uh, and just jump right in and everybody forgetting the lessons that were right there in front of us. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I'm hoping that we don't, uh, Bernadette says, educate ourselves, the education, yeah. uh, education, mindset, emotional intelligence, all these things are very important. Juanita in South Africa, we should not want to go back to anything, but rather use this opportunity to start fresh. I agree. There's, Absolutely. there is no going back and there's, there's no back to normal. No, that's, that's, and we, we're going to need to be mindful for a long time. Any, any of you who have been to Japan or other countries, you know, they wear masks when they have a cold, you know, we right. actually, yeah, they do. I mean, you know, please, you know, any of you anti-maskers and all that stuff, just, you know, you know, just be more community minded, just consider it as a possibility. Yeah, because yeah, this, this is going on in a lot longer than it needs to. Absolutely, yeah, a lot longer. And you know, we need to watch out for each other. We need to care about each other a, a little bit more. Mona says your show has saved us through this tough time. Thank you so much. Love here and love it is. Thank you, Mona. I really appreciate those uh, beautiful words. And uh, this has been amazing. Would you believe that we have chatted? lovingly and flowingly for almost three hours. That's I never, <laughs> wow. That would explain why I'm tired. <laughs> I'm also, um, uh, this is a beautiful conversation it, with not only with you, Jim, but with, with, um, with your family, you know, your extended global family, the love it is, the yeah. love it is, you know, it's a great group of people. Well, I certainly hope that the show, my friend, uh, met your expectations and uh, that you enjoyed the time with me as I certainly have with you. Very much. So, yeah, it exceeded my expectations. And um, this will go down in, in history, I would say, likely of the longest as the longest interview I've ever done and probably ever will do. <laughs> and I and I don't regret a second of it. It's actually been a joy. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. We try to make it warm and conversational and uh, we just let it, you know, we just let it flow and whatever happens happens. And, yeah. uh, and some beautiful things happen tonight. That's for sure. Bernadette mm -hmm. is saying, uh, thank you, Terry, for sharing your stories and gifts with us. And of course you're welcome back anytime. We don't have to talk for three hours, but <laughs> we want to introduce you to everybody. Now that they know you can <laughs> go back for updates. <laughs> But the door, we'll keep the porch light on for you, my friend. You're always welcome. You're a, you're a delight. You're you're a, a multi-talented individual, but there's a lot of heart and soul beyond all of that talent. And that was obviously clearly evidenced tonight, not just in 
the music and the presentation, but in the words and the spirit of it all, which is clearly evident. Uh, and my Libra radar was working <laughs> overtime and I picked that up right away, sir. <laughs> this was outstanding conversation, Terry Jim. Thank you, Terry. Be healthy and safe. Thanks, Mary. Uh, this is all the lovely love as we wrap. Please do come back, Terry. Absolutely. Linda. Is it there a song in there? Please do come back, Terry. <laughs> and uh, thank you, Terry. What a great conversation. Love your music. Stay safe. Be yeah. well. Sherry, uh, it was a wonderful, it was wonderful meeting you, Terry, and hearing your music, your stories. Please come back again soon. Thank you, Terry. Uh, it was a great conversation. Love your music. Stay safe. Be well. Thanks for sharing your time and uh, your stories with us and your gifts with us. Uh, Terry, thank you for coming to visit us tonight. You by far have been one of the best, most interesting, fun guests without doubt. Love that. And uh, good stuff. I love all this lovely coming our way here. It's been an amazing evening from Kathy in uh, Cleveland. Um, thank you for sharing your wonderful life with us as well. And I second that emotion, Terry, and I uh, raise, how did this class get empty? I think George yeah. Burns, George Burns, he's got that <laughs> cigar and he siphons these things. <laughs> I toast you. I toast you. You Cheer. be well and you be safe. And hopefully one of these days, maybe when you're on the East Coast or I'm out there on a TV shoot on the West Coast, we'll get together and can we break bread? And I'd love to chat some more. It'd be a pleasure. I look forward to it, Jim. Thank you again. Absolutely. Really Love coming once again from, since we had a lot of Brazilian flair tonight, Carla in Brazil. Terry is so talented, captivating, enjoy a lot. Thanks, Terry, for tonight. And Jim Masters for this amazing show. Greetings from Brazil. Obrigado. Thank you both so much for tonight, for your time. Great show. Nice to be here. And not to think about the outside world. Very mm -hmm. relaxing. Slancha, the Irish cheers from Bernadette oh, and Carol in Nova Scotia. Stay well and stay safe. Terry, my friend, an absolute pleasure and a delight. Do stay in touch. I'd uh, love, love to have you back. And uh, new friendship made here. Collaboration. And uh, I wish you all the best. Jim, it's so great to meet you finally. Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. We'll do it again, okay? I look forward to it. Now go stretch those legs. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm gonna make some dinner too. Some Ooh, what are, dinner. What are you gonna have? That this is a foodie crowd. They love food. Well, I think we have some leftover grilled salmon from last night, so uh -oh. I think it re revolve around that. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, my friend, and thanks for joining us tonight. Good night, Jim, and good night to all the levities around the world. Really a pleasure to meet all of you. You as well. Yeah. Take bye -bye care. Now. Bye bye. bye. How am I? Was that incredible? Did you enjoy yourself, everybody? And Kathleen says, uh, take care, Terry. Thank you. And uh, as always, please stay safe and stay well. Stay safe. Absolutely. Stay safe is uh, definitely one of the themes. We thank Terry for joining us and for the wonderful conversation, all the terrific music, some exclusives as well. Just want to show you a couple of other things. There's this as well. And we played that, Cassini's Last Dance. Also this as well, you should check this out, Terry Woolman, A Joyful Noise, wonderful uh, Christmas tunes that came out during the holiday season. This was the original album, remember? Bimini. And of course, this was uh, Welcome to Paradise. There's also the complete collection as well. Again, uh, true artist, great guy, heart and soul. Thank you for all the comments. I noticed you guys were saying I have the best guests and I have great people uh, on the show. This is the song that you heard us play as well. Uh, I really appreciate that. I, I you know, uh, we didn't start this show with guests. You may remember we started this show in the springtime because this is sort of an extension of my professional work in television and radio. I'm sort of balancing this with the busyness of my professional work, but this really started with me just talking to the audience and then building it from there. And then guests started wanting to come on, friends from television, film, music, Broadway, Hollywood, other areas. And uh, it's just continued to blossom that way. And uh, sometimes we don't have a guest because I schedule a show where it's just us. We call that a host chat show. And we'll talk about food and life and photos and all kinds of cool things, what everybody's up to. And, and I, as your host, and you as our faithful, lovely viewers and friends, we just chat, we have fun, and we do a lot of cool things together. And that's what this show is all about. Uh, it's not just music. It's not just uh, 
science. It's not just actors. It's not, it's everything. It's life. And that's a, a true entertainment lifestyle talk show series. Speaking of which, tomorrow we're going to be back at it at 3 p.m. with another amazing guest live from Ireland, George Hutton. He's all excited. Irish singer, songwriter. He's going to perform live for us as well. He's going to perform live from Ireland, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, 8 p.m. for everybody watching in Europe. Uh, and that's going to be fantastic. So we're going to be on earlier tomorrow. That's on our YouTube channel at Jim Masters TV. Another brilliant artist, another great friend coming to us from Ireland live on the Jim Masters show live tomorrow. That's Sunday, January 10th, 2021, 3 p.m. Eastern. Again, set your clocks, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, 8 p.m. for folks watching in Ireland, Scotland, and England. That's right. So that's tomorrow. That is our very special musical Sunday show. It's going to be an afternoon show. So uh, have some lunch with us, those on the East Coast. Uh, have a brunch with us, those on the West Coast. And those in the middle, uh, let's see. I guess you have a little of each. Maybe that's brunch too. And those over in Europe, have some dinner with us. <laughs> and George Hutton, he's all excited. Just want to let you know, uh, next Saturday, live from Athens, Greece, another dear friend. We talked about him today. If you missed our incredible show earlier today at 3 p.m. with uh, internationally acclaimed Greek tenor and theater actor, uh, Mario Frangoulis, you can check it out. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of people have watched it already live and are watching it right now, binge watching it on our YouTube channel at Gym Masters TV. Unbelievable. Uh, I've known Mario for years. He popped on for an epic extended conversation and music and more. And uh, it was really great. That was our afternoon episode. We, we did two shows today. Whew. Wow, <laughs> go to sleep well tonight and then have to be up to get the show ready for tomorrow with uh, George Hutton. But uh, we have a whole bevy of shows during the week. Author and columnist and speaker Heather Dugan is going to be with us on Monday for an incredible conversation. And then uh, on Tuesday, comedian and actor Josh Hyman. So we've got you in a mood with some nice music tonight and cool Saturday vibes, right? We're going to have you thinking and really being inspired on Monday with author, columnist, and speaker Heather Dugan. Uh, she's a best-selling author. And then on Tuesday, Josh Hyman is going to make us laugh with his comedy. He's a comedian and uh, also an actor. He's going to be with us on Tuesday. And then we have more guests I'll tell you about tomorrow for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then on Saturday next week, live from Athens, Greece, George Paris is going to be here. French singer and uh, Greek singer, French Greek, his mom, French, dad, Greek, singer, songwriter. He had a public television special, a couple of them, actually. Uh, he's We've been friends for years. As a matter of fact, uh, if you didn't see these earlier, there's uh, there's Mario Frangoulis, there's myself, and there's George Paris, who's going to be with us live from Athens. George is on the right, I'm in the middle, and uh, Mario is on the left. There we are again. This is in New York City. George on the left, me in the middle, and Mario on the right. There's Mario and me and uh, another brilliant guitarist, uh, Angelos uh, Matsopoulos. Here's some other folks uh, that were with us as well that evening. Uh, Andrea Stasu, who is uh, next to Mario. Mario is in the center. Andrea is on the right. She worked for CBS News. Nina Pineda, you may know from WABC Channel 7 in New York. Uh, she's on the left. I'm on the right of Andrea. And George Paris, who's our guest next Saturday, is in this photo as well. And there we are having some fun. I'm in the middle. Andrea is on the right. Uh, Mario Frangoulis on the left, George is next to him, Zach Singer, the wonderful uh, violinist, uh, cellist is uh, in the back, and we were just having a good time. Uh, Tammy McCann, who was a guest, you may remember in December, she, this was a wonderful evening uh, of uh, celebrating her uh, CD release at the Cutting Room in New York City. I'm way in the back there, a bunch of friends of ours. George Paris is on the far left. He's the guest next Saturday. Mario is in the front there with Tammy. And we were having just a great, great time. 
And uh, here we are, this is at Jazz at Lincoln Center in New York City. George Paris on the right, who's with us next Saturday, Tammy McCann, fabulous jazz vocalist. She was with us. If you missed the episode with Tammy McCann, it's on our YouTube channel. Uh, she's a dear friend. All of these are dear friends. And uh, we did a wonderful holiday episode with Tammy and she's on our YouTube channel. And Mario is uh, on the left there. And then I'm on the far left with the uh, black tie and the pink shirt. That is me, Mario, Tammy, and George. And George is with us next Saturday. And there we are again. I'm on the far right. Tammy, Mario, George, and our friends uh, in New York City having a uh, grand time. So with all that, George will be with us next Saturday. We thank our very special guests, uh, Billboard Charting, Jazz, Pop, incredible musician, guitarist, and composer, Terry Woolman. Appreciate all his time, appreciate all his talent. We appreciate him joining us on the show today. Next Sunday, a week from this Sunday, Ireland's leading country music singer, Nathan Carter, is going to be with us. That's Sunday the 17th, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, 8 p.m. in Ireland, Scotland, and England on our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, we would love that. Let's take a look at some of the comments before we wrap up a very busy day, very long day with two lengthy shows. We did, we've been on the air for almost seven hours <laughs> This is like a telethon. Uh, three and a half hours with Mario this afternoon, and now just about three hours with Terry. But it flows by like butter, doesn't it? Uh, and I always ask the guests, how much time do they have? Do you have a clock? Do you have to be somewhere? Um, do you have anywhere that you know you have to cut out to be? And I say every single one of them says no. Nope. Uh, let's talk and let's just roll with it. So um, the shows in terms of the length are not something that I say, oh, we have to do three hour, two, three hour shows. Sometimes we do an hour show. Sometimes we do an hour and a half. Depends on the conversation, the flow, the levity, and uh, what other plans I have and what other plans the guests have as well. So uh, it's really cool. So Yes, uh, he's another Irishman, Karen, absolutely. And uh, very incredible indeed. Great pictures. Thank you very much, Mona. And good night to you as well, all the lovelies. Hope everybody has a good night. We'll be here earlier tomorrow, 3 p.m. Eastern on our YouTube channel. So anybody watching us on Facebook, join us over on YouTube. You get a chance to enjoy some incredible music with Irish singer-songwriter George Hutton, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, 8 p.m. in Ireland, Scotland, and England. That's tomorrow. And uh, Derek Huff would be great too. Yes. I'm getting a lot of suggestions for guests from our viewers. Good night, Juanita. What a great show. Thanks, Jim. This was a fantastic week of shows. Good night. It was a very moving week of shows, wasn't it? Monday with all the guest uh, comments. Remember we had all the videos from all the guests and the viewers. We're going to be doing a whole show, re-airing some of those and some new ones that we have uh, been receiving from viewers as well as our lovely guests. If you still want to make a video, whether you're a guest, previous guest, or you are a viewer, you can send a video. It could be on your phone, it could be a laptop, your computer. You can send it to jimmasterstv at gmail.com. That's jimmasterstv at gmail.com. And uh, we'll air it on an upcoming episode of our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series. So Juanita says, what a great show. Thanks, Jim. There was a fantastic week of shows. Good night, everyone, and keep well. From South America, from Juanita. <laughs> Juanita and her lovely daughter jumping around in that swimming pool. Love that. And we're going to probably show that again. Uh, good night, Mr. Lovety. Good night, Lovety's. You as well. Looking forward to everything. George is an excellent tenor. Yes, he is here next Saturday. And again, we've got an amazing week of shows all in between. People are asking me, even my family and friends are saying, are you still doing these shows seven days a week? Are you still doing two shows a day sometimes? Right now, yes. <laughs> Good night, loveties. Have a wonderful night. Sleep well and please stay safe. We'd love it if you share these episodes with your friends, if you uh, 
love the uh, YouTube channel at Gym Masters TV. Share the channel. Share our YouTube page. We would love that. Gym Masters TV, our Facebook page as well, Gym Masters TV, and uh, Instagram and Twitter at Gym Masters TV. Share, share, share. I know you guys are really, really good at doing that. And for every single one of you who have done that and you've written to me and you tell me that you do it all the time, I say thank you and you and you and you. You guys are the best. That really helps the show. When you do subscribe to the channel, it helps the show. Because when you subscribe to the channel, it allows us to create more content, have more great guests, go on location, and expand this show with some of the amazing ideas we have for the show even further when you subscribe to the YouTube channel and you like the Facebook page and Instagram. And uh, no cost to subscribe to the YouTube channel. So I don't know why they call it subscribe, but you just click it. Make sure now some people say, oh, when I go on YouTube, I can't comment. You can if you log in. Make sure when you go on and subscribe to a YouTube channel, you log in. So that way there you can comment during the live show because we are one of the rare shows where we bring the viewers in and you can see all the comments or we sometimes we can't show all of them because either we're busy or there's a lot of production going on or uh, they go by so fast, but we try to show as many as we can. Uh, so nobody should feel slighted because we do try to show as many as we can. Good night, Jim and lovely friends. Take care of yourselves. You too, Mary Bishop, the wonderful Mary Bishop. We love you, Mary, in Pine Island, Florida. And I use that mug every day. Thanks for another great night, Jim. Stay safe. See you tomorrow. You as well. I always love when I say when I see somebody say, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you on the next show. I really appreciate that. Karen Campbell Green in Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia. You like that, Karen? I <laughs> I'm just going to make one of those ASMR videos where all I do for Karen is I go, Nova Scotia, Nova Scotia, Nova Scotia. <laughs> That'll put you right to sleep, Karen. You can think of the water and the snow coming down in Nova Scotia. You like that, Karen? Maybe I should just make a recording of me saying Nova Scotia because I know you tell me often how much you enjoy when I say Nova Scotia. I, I love saying that word, uh, Nova Scotia. Jim, you haven't had a bad guest on this show ever, and we're not trying to either. <laughs> you attract the best people, my friend. Yeah, I, uh, very, uh, you know, I want good people on the show. I want people who have uh, pizzazz in life, who people who want to be here, not people who are selling a book or just promoting something. There's many shows that the person only goes on the show because they're selling something and they're promoting something and that's what they're doing. This show is unique. It's about entertainment, lifestyle. It's a talk show series, bringing back the lost out of conversation. And it's about life and about sharing and inspiring. So if somebody has you know something they're promoting, that's fine, but we don't want the whole show to be just somebody promoting something. Uh, you know, because that's, then that's like just sales. Um, we, we want good conversations, entertainment, levity, levity, just like talk shows. Another great show, Jim. Thank you. Have a great night. Take care and be safe all good night. You too, Kathleen, my incredible friend in New York city. I appreciate you very much. Good night, Jim. And good night, everyone. Please stay safe. Stay well. XX, my usual heartfelt sign off. Yes, Bernadette by Dell. Yes, you do have the best guests, Mr. Loverty. Thank you very much. We work very hard behind the scenes here at the show to bring you the best in entertainment, Loverty, and so much more. I know it looks so easy and smooth, but there's a lot of work behind the scenes to pull all this off. Uh, but I enjoy it and I love it for all of you. And, and I love it too, just as much as you guys do. Thank you for a wonderful evening. It's been a good long day of shows. Good night, Jim, and everyone. Be safe and sleep well. You too. And Allison Tillman had a taco. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate knowing that. I know you probably heard us talking about food. Uh, don't get this crowd on food, Allison. We'll do another two hours. Yes, yes, yes. What a great night. Terry's fabulous. Meow. <laughs> Meowing in Nova Scotia. Thank you, Jim, for bringing Terry to Levity Hall this evening. Such an amazing show. Thank you, Sherry. I appreciate that. Sherry, you know, I've been trying to email you back. You sent a video, and I've been trying to email you back, but the email address you used to email your video 
keeps bouncing back as not uh, available. So I don't know if you have another email address, Sherry, you can send it to me at jimmasterstv at gmail.com, the same address where you sent that fantastic video. But uh, I tried to respond to the video to thank you, but it uh, it keeps bouncing back as your email address is not available. So I don't know if there's something that maybe happened to your email address, but check that out. And so we sent a thank you and I will say it live on air. Thank you. Uh, thanks again for another excellent episode, Jim. My pleasure. Good night, Terry and Mr. Lovety and Ann had ribeye for dinner. <laughs> What'd you have with it? Baked potato or take care and thank you. And that sounds delicious. We had our dinner already. We made sure with two shows dinner was had in between. And you know what we had? We had Caesar salad and we ordered pizza, which was delivered. We had pizza here at the house, something quick and easy, a Saturday night of pizza, you know, some really good pizza. It means thank you in Portuguese. Very nice. See you next show, Carla. Thank you. I'm sure you really enjoyed tonight's show. I knew you would. I'm glad you tuned in tonight. Uh, you tend to be here on Saturdays, and we love that. And uh, one of these days, we got to get either us to Brazil or you up here. I like your idea of the Lovety Cruise and having Terry. Boy, we're going to have Terry. We're going to have Tesla Bella. We're going to have all these great people on our Lovety Cruise. Could you imagine how cool and how much fun that's going to be? I'll have to hand select the guests that I think I would like to have on the Lovety Cruise and then personally invite them if they're available. And then if we go on this big Lovety Cruise, maybe to, to Brazil, um, that would be cool. That would be cool. Karen says, uh, homemade, homemade cheeseburgers and homemade fries at our house. <laughs> We're getting all the live, uh, latest, uh, late breaking updates on the food scene. Speaking of dinner, had, uh, homemade chicken soup. Oh, Tortellini, or is that Tortelli? Really, really nice. Sharon says, good night from Michigan. You're such a good interviewer, Jim. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Appreciate that very, very much. And um, beautiful words. Francis says, good night, everyone. And yes, looking forward to seeing you tomorrow, Jim. Also, we're looking forward to seeing you as well, Francis. It's always wonderful when you are here. Nova Scotia. Meow. <laughs> That's going to be your new nickname, Karen. Meow. <laughs> you know that. You know we're going to start that here at Levity Hall, right? Now, every time we think of uh, Karen Campbell Green, we're going to think of her in Nova Scotia. Meow. <laughs> Love it. Tortellini. Well, gang, we're going to wrap. It is ten, almost 1030 in the evening here on a Saturday night. This was cool, wasn't it? So, if I remember without forgetting with all of these production elements today, I've already told you who's coming on the show. And we, we thanked Terry for joining us as well. He was fantastic. And it was my honor and pleasure to have him here on the show. He really is a great artist and um, a dear friend of Melissa Manchester. And did you notice in that video we showed at the end, uh, Melissa was in there as well performing. I, Melissa was a wonderful person to have on the show. And, um, I've always been admired her and her work. And if you did not see the uh, episode we had with music legend, Melissa Manchester, it's right there front and center on our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. Terry mentioned that he watched that episode and he really just enjoyed the, the flow and the style and, um, the levity. So, uh, when I asked him if he wanted to come on, there you go. Uh, it was actually uh, Melissa and her team that recommended Terry to me. And then I, you know, spoke to Terry and Terry said, I love the show and I want to pop on. So I really appreciate that. Gang, don't forget to smile. We always say smile, smile, smile. Yes, you saw uh, Melissa there in that video. Mm, see you tomorrow. And uh, Mona had homemade Cajun jambalaya. Nice. Ha ha. Meow. <laughs> Meowing in uh, Nova Scotia. Well, there's your smiley face. Don't forget to smile, everybody, and share the smile. Love and the lovity. Don't forget to share the lovity. And as you saw, Terry, originally from Miami, living in California, loves the ocean. 
as does yours truly growing up uh, near the ocean in New York on Long Island, also the southern New England coast. The ocean uh, is a very, very big zen place for me, but also time with loving family and friends and uh, playing tennis and writing and the work that I do in uh, television and radio and multimedia all these years. Love it all. And all the people I've had an opportunity to work with and continue to have an opportunity to work with in the various roles uh, on air, on camera, behind the scenes. Love it all. And love all of you. And don't forget, as we say, well, this is quite a goodbye. We have some routine to our goodbyes here, huh? Don't forget to relax. Don't forget to breathe. Don't forget to breathe from the diaphragm. Relax. Relax. Go, go to Nova Scotia and relax. Go to Brazil and relax. Go to South Africa and relax. Or stay in your house because that's all we can do right now. We have to stay in our homes. So while you're in your house, try to relax. Keep watching the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series if you want to be inspired, entertained, have some fun, uh, be informed, educated, learn something every day, and you want to relax. Try to do that. I have to remind myself to do it as well. Uh, George Burns is back there, and Gilligan is over there. You see Gilligan, and Silver is here as well. Almost knocked him over. Silver is here. Silver says goodnight as well. We're going to have to have a show where we bring the characters back, right? I know you guys are missing all the characters. Jimmy and Lin Lin the panda. The big monster panda is over there as well. We're going to wrap, gang, uh, so I can stretch my legs. You're going to your hot tub to relax. <laughs> now that would be a great Gym Master Show Live on location segment. <laughs> I must shut that down. We're going to be going to California. And we're going to be stopping by Ann's house, and we're going to be doing an on-location shoot at Ann's. Uh, yes, come to Nova Scotia, everybody, please be my guests. That sounds great. Enjoy your evening, Ann. Relax in that hot tub. Have a wonderful time. Uh, yes, come to South Africa when all the nonsense has passed. I agree. And you're going to snuggle up with your cats and your family. Sounds very, very nice. You love the ocean. Uh, come to Nova Scotia. You love the ocean. And relax at the ocean. Always sharing the levity here, Jim. That's beautiful. Have some popcorn or ice cream. We have both here in-house. I think uh, we will have one of those. Gang, we're going to say goodnight. Thank you very much for joining us. This is your host, Jim Masters, thanking you for your time this time till next time. Uh, we appreciate all the levity and we appreciate all of the kindness and you guys viewing. Some of you are here every single day, and I really appreciate that. Um, continue telling everybody about the show so we can grow and expand. Um, we're doing that on this end here, but you guys who know what the show's about and you love the feeling of the show, spread the word. That actually helps the show. Many of you say, well, what can you do to help the show? How can we help the Tell everybody, spread the word, have them, you know, check out the YouTube channel, watch the shows, subscribe, all those fun things, and continue watching and enjoying. That's what we're here for. I'm so glad that I decided to do this show back in April of last year um, with the schedule that I have, which is nutty. I'm so glad I decided because for years people asked me to do something like this. And I'm so glad that I actually, you know, said, you know what, let's do it. Let's get the studio lights. Let's build a home studio and, and let's do this. And, uh, and we are, and we're all here together. Love it. Galore, levity abounds, levity rules, right? Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Karen. We have a wonderful evening in Nova Scotia. <laughs> Good night, gang. We will see you tomorrow. Jim Masters, thank you for your time this time. Till next time, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, uh, and 8 p.m. in Ireland, Scotland, England. Irish singer, songwriter, extraordinaire, George Hutton is going to be here in the house playing lots of music, lots and lots of great music, and lots of Irish crack. Missed an episode? You can see them all on our YouTube channel. Want to see this one again? Check us out on YouTube at Jim Masters TV. Good night, gang. We love you all. We will see you soon tomorrow. Get some rest. Or if you're just starting your day, we'll see you in the last half of your day. Good night. Thanks for being with us. Bye-bye. <laughs>